Hello and welcome to Supernatural 20 Season 2. Unlike the first season, I have a story that I'm going to be weaving in through all of these one-shots. I'm still going to be sampling community-driven material for these one-shots, and each story is going to be separate and unique with a conclusion of its own, but I am thinking ahead. As a result, some of the material you see in these episodes may be slightly altered to fit my narrative. This season kicks things off with the DM Dave adventure, The Camp Clearwater Massacre. Links to the module and DM Dave's work will be down in the description. This season we're going to be recording our episodes and doing live premieres on YouTube. Now since we're recording, I've actually been able to hold off on giving the players any information, including the title of this adventure. And as usual, I decided to throw a little twist into things. The group is playing an all new party of level one adventurers, so I'm certain that nothing is going to go wrong. I think you're going to enjoy everything that I have in store this season, and I'm excited to present episode one. The Camp Clearwater Massacre. Enjoy. All right. Welcome, everybody. So you just heard that introduction, which means we're here for Supernatural 20. We've got a really great one today. Why don't we introduce these new characters, uh, starting with Steph. Well, oh, hello everyone. Um, today I am playing the Scrappy Koo, the Kubalt. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce Kubalts. Um, and he's kind of ready to wreak a bit of havoc. Um, and and I don't know. I guess we're gonna find out. That's right. And a kobold. Very interesting choice, Steph. Seems like you might have been uh, on this monster race kick. <laughs> a little bit. Um, yes, I was previously on the Rank Amateurs one-shot mm. that's in a couple parts. I had so much fun with my bugbear that I decided to bring in another monster there to my go. horde. <clears throat> so. well, I'm excited to see how Scrappy Scrappy does. Yeah, I, um, I hope he doesn't die. If anyone has seen season one, I die a lot. So, um, ready. Not really. <laughs> You got like three characters, right? Something like that. Yeah. yeah, uh yeah. I think I ran through three characters last campaign. Last season. So um so I'm I'm, I'm hoping that I can um, bring that down to two this season. <laughs> we'll see. I I can't promise anything. Fair. Christian. And yeah, I haven't rage quit yet, so <laughs> good. Christian, who are we playing today? Hi everyone, I am playing uh Zuzu. He is a um, human wizard. First time I've ever played a wizard, actually. So we'll see how this goes. I'm excited. Yeah, sure. Uh, sure, it's very similar to Azula last yep. season, right? So wizard, yep. sorcerer. So yeah, we'll see. but not as cool. Just, I don't I don't know. Azula just seems cooler right now. Right now. But Azula right now. could surprise everybody. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Michelle? Hello everyone, uh, I am playing Yen, who is a level one human sorceress. Uh, Yen used to be an extremely powerful sorceress who could channel the forces of chaos and uh, use them uh, in however way she wanted. But recently she went through a very big event where she had to expend all of the chaos stored in her body and now she has very little left. So she has She's working through a lot right now, you know, coming to terms with her new weakened state. And so, yeah, excited to explore what season two has to offer, starting That's with right. Yen. Starting with Yen. Mm -hmm. And then we go to Andrew, who's not playing Dobby. Hey guys, uh, I'm playing actually Lothar Ironborn. He is a mountain dwarf paladin, and I'm um, just looking forward to hitting some things with my hammer instead of shooting them with some magic. Okay. Yeah, so a little different for you today. Yep. But you know what? This might be a nice little change of pace for you. You played Dobby we'll for so long. We'll see. We'll see. All right, and we go to Steve, rounding out the group. Hi, everybody. I'm playing the Grey Dougal. He's a halfling thief, uh, first level. He's completely untrustworthy. A little chaotic in nature. And um, yeah, I've grown quite attached to him. Nice. So I hope he doesn't die either. Yeah, it's always fun making a first level character because you, you have this idea in your head, you get this like, you know, this 
you get this uh it's weird like you you just created them right you know and and you're so excited and hopeful and then you get the future is so heart bright. ripped out of your chest when they, they die. die it's gonna be great so a couple things you probably notice we're missing one member of uh the crew from last year dasha's not on this season orel her paladin of of uh Pelor is uh, taking an extended vacation in the lands of Barovia. The rest of the group left, leaving Orel there, knowing that Orel was going to stay and protect these people. Uh, the threat was diminished, though, right? Strahd was defeated, so I don't think there's any any trouble there at all right now. So Orel's just probably, you know, getting some getting some sun, soaking up mm. the rays, and nothing could be wrong at all. Until Strad comes back. Well, no, I'm sure you've defeated him for good. So, <laughs> just a quick reminder, if you'd like to see any of the Supernatural Season 1, uh, check the playlist out. I'm going to leave a link down below. And maybe, if I'm a good YouTuber, I'll put it in the thing that comes up right here. Uh, maybe you can see that. And either way, this season, as most of the sessions were in last season, is going to be completely separate, right? All of these events are one-shots. Uh, and so this is a very interesting one shot. I haven't told the players the, the title, so they don't know. But we're going to dive right in, and uh, I hope you enjoy. All right, everybody, you ready to dive in? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Ready. All right. I gave you a brief description of what your motivations were. The group has been headed through the wilderness for the past few, few days. Uh, you're headed towards an old campground that have, are being... Yeah, being renovated, perhaps for future use. Uh, in fact, your patron, the person that hired you, is in business with a man named Steve. Not our Steve, a different Steve. But Steve has been working on getting this old campgrounds up so that perhaps the wealthy nobles of the area would send their children there for a time period in the summer, maybe a month and a half or so. And in exchange, they would pay for, to have their children uh, partake in all these fun activities. Now, you've been traveling for a few days, and your patience is finally rewarded as you turn the bend and you see a massive wooden sign reading, Welcome to Camp Clearwater. A simple painting of a lake flanked by trees joins the words, a few hundred yards beyond, you can see a timbered entrance to a camp with a few cabins lurking in the distance. How do you approach? Do we see any people? It's hard to tell from your vantage, but you hear the sounds of chatter, people discussing, uh, somebody barking orders, and... You kind of can see that in the in the distance faint humanoid figures, but too hard to tell who they are. Wow, we walk. Clearwater portion. sounds promising, though. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say Clearwater sounds super promising. I mean, where I come from, water's pretty dirty. So, um, yeah, let's let's go see. Let's go see the water, guys. Come okay. on, let's go. Let's go. I'm sure it's crystal clear. Mm. Crystal. So let's, let's clear water lake yes why don't we so, um approach the voices the figures totally. that we see yeah so you're just casually walking like no no precaution i would assume right there's no need to be no need to be nervous or anything hmm. so ahead of what you could happen? right what could happen you see six young humanoids exit the nearest cabin and approach they're all wearing pale yellow tunics with matching short pants, each one with the word Camp Counselor embroidered over their left breast of the tunic. A friendly bunch, they all seem to make quick introductions. Ned, Jack, Bill, Marcy, Brenda, and Alice. Hey, how's it going, says Bill. Hey, you guys have funny names. Oh, I like your outfits. Why are you guys all matching? This is really cool. I like your color. Oh my gosh. Where, where do I get one? Where do I sign up? How do I get here? Bill says, whoa, whoa, whoa. Trouble, you know that? 
<laughs> whoa, 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 hold on, all right? Slow it down. Take a chill pill. What, listen, what, what's you, that? listen here, you young rascals. I'll say. My name's a great Dougal, it is. And I want to know where your boss is. Don't be wasting my time. Ned, who seems to be the more serious one, he says uh, to you, All right, everybody. These are probably some of the new staff. They're here to help us. You're looking for Steve, aren't you? That's right. Good. Alice says, who's uh, she's uh, probably the youngest of them, probably maybe uh, maybe 15 or 16 It's at, or so. Uh, she seems to be very eager, and she says, Oh, I can run and, and get Steve for you. Go ahead, little darling. Go get him. All right, I'll be I'll be right back. She she runs off to the distance towards one of the further cabins, and uh, after a brief moment, you see her rejoin you with a man who looks like he's probably in his middle age uh, years, and he comes up. He's got a very short, tight haircut, a mustache. Uh, slightly salt and pepper brown hair. And he says, Howdy there. Welcome to Camp Clearwater. My name is Steve. How can I help you? Hi, Steve. We're in here to help. How can we help? We're here. Where do I get one of those outfits? I want one of those outfits. Oh, are you the new recruits? Yes, sir. Oh, right on, right on. Well, yeah, we've got quite a bit to go. I know there's only a month left till summer, but we expect a bunch of little campers coming around here very soon. In fact, some of the some of the kids might be sent a week or so early, so we only have, you know, time is a factor here. Uh, any help that you can provide us would be great. Obviously, I'll show you to your lodging and things like that. Uh, you'll, you're, our boss talked about compensation already, I assume. Yes. Aye, that he did. Great, great. Well, here. I, uh, here he takes out a sack and he pulls out some of the same light pink and yellow uh, tunics. And he hands them to each of you. He has, seems to have one for about your size, although I'd probably say scrappy. Yours is a little baggy. I'll say, what's <laughs> this? I wear his gray. I don't wear his yellow. Oh, well... Sorry, little man. We have to uh, wear these camp policy. You understand. I'll just uh, tie mine around my arm and say, "There, I'm wearing it." Oh, so you're wearing like a, like a like a bandana? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And I try to tie it around my neck like a, like a little cape or something. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you I'm gonna too? tie the sleeves to like the my shoulders, so it's a little cloak. Gotcha. Perfect. What about Zuzu? I put mine on. I just go full. I like the look. What's a uh, Zuzu? What's Zuzu's appearance? He... I get an idea for Scrappy. You know, for for Gray. I'm gonna go because looking at the, the character token, he's definitely of older, older uh, age. Um, you know, he doesn't not necessarily excited to be surrounded by children. I think. Gotcha. But. Actually, that's a good job. point. Why don't oh, I bring? No. Why don't I bring our tokens? Mr. Gray also onto wears me. a little like Robin type of mask across his face. So you can't see him. You can't like see his whole face. Oh, he wears a mask. Yeah, like like Robin did. Like oh, Robin okay, like a thing. eye mask. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Eye mask across, yeah. Gray, I'm gonna bring all your tokens in. Here we go. So we can see we've got our kobold, we've got Scrappy, we've got mm -hmm. our elderly wizard now that we've decided Zuzu we've got Yen and Lothar is their paladin dwarven paladin and then we've got Grey who is wearing that mask that's perfect that I actually have a mask on the token for you so it worked nice. out so that's our that's our crew for today uh, this is our our new new cast so Steve says to you all uh, you must have had a long journey. You must be hungry. Would you like some lunch? Absolutely. Oh, wonderful. We can we can whip something up, right? Right, crew? And he looks over to the rest of the counselors. They all look like they're, generally speaking, pretty happy, pretty 
pretty uh, amicable. Uh, Ned, though, says, Steve, you know, lunch isn't for another hour, and we are on a tight schedule. Don't you think we should be working until lunch? Don't take it early. And everybody's like, oh, Ned, come on. And Steve's like, no, you're right. Ned, Ned keeps me on my toes. All right. Ned, Ned is right. We should still work and, and make sure we get everything done before. Because after lunch, we all know it's just a, it's a crapshoot what we get done here. So, all right, everybody, that's a great idea. Let's work for another hour or so. We'll get the new people acclimated and then we'll meet for lunch. And then Ned says, but Steve, don't you remember you're, you're not going to be here for lunch today? And Steve goes, oh. My goodness, you're right, right on. Everyone, I apologize. I'm actually only going to be here for the next half an hour or so. I'm gathering my things. I'm actually headed into town for supplies. I'll be back probably in the morning. Um, the nearest town is the opposite direction you came, so you, you didn't have a... Uh, uh, you didn't pass it on the way in, but he's like, I'll be I'll be there and back in the morning. So uh, you all get get to know everybody. All right. Brenda, if you want to give everybody a quick tour, that would be great. Sure thing, boss, Brenda says. She's probably the tallest of the counselors. She's got long brown hair and a ponytail. And Brenda says, follow me. I'll take you on a, on a quick little tour. Then we'll jump into some of our some of our tasks for the day. Sound good? Fine. Hey. Sounds good. Yeah, lead the way. Lunch, I want mutton. Mold wine and some stew as well. Oh, I think we've just got some uh, PB and J's. I love what PB and J's. Well, we grind PB &Js up the PB and J's are usually yeah. you got peanuts and then you got um, some bugbear and then you got some jellies from what? the slime and then you put it on like some hard bread and then did I say peanuts already? You usually have some peanuts. This sounds horrible. I got my dagger. I was like, maybe I'll just skewer kobold instead. Ooh, gross. No, I don't. Yeah, you don't want me. I'm a little too skinny, man. There's like nothing on me. What are you doing? Ooh, I don't like that. That doesn't sound good. But uh, we do have peanut butter and uh, some preserves that we have stored, so we can we can do that. Um, anyway, let's uh let let's give yourself give yourselves a tour here. Uh, let's let's begin. And I'm going to switch over the Roll20 map here so you can see. Okay. All right. Oh, a nice slow fade here I did. Okay, good. So you can see here, um, I'm just going to describe to you a couple of the places. And if you want to make a note of anything, you can. The big cabin, which is right here. On the bottom left-hand side of the map. B1, the big cabin, right here. Can you all see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, yeah, you can place your tokens in, actually. That's totally fine. So, Brenda says, I'm going to take you across to where you're going to be staying. And as we go through, I'll point out some of the locations. Come on with me. So, she brings you across. Uh, she's going to tell you to go east towards this cabin right here. So, move your tokens towards that cabin. She says, this here is Steve's cabin. Um, obviously, you won't really need to go in here too much. Uh, Steve, obviously, he's got some important business papers and stuff like that. So you won't have to worry about going in here. But Steve, usually, uh, if you need something, you can knock on the door. He'll 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 usually come, even at the late night hours, if you need something. And what's great is he's right by the water. So if you wanted to come by and ask a question, you can go for a swim. A lot of us do go for a swim after dinner. Right when the sun's setting. It's a lot of fun. Oh. Any questions? Nope. Okay. All right. You're not a very talkative bunch. I get it. I get it. You'll you'll learn. We're all very friendly here. Head over with, to this one now. And she goes to, points to uh, the dock in the, in the uh, distance there. The dock is, uh, it's actually... You can see there's actually multiple buildings here, and it seems like each one serves a different purpose for the campgrounds. As you would think, the dock is, uh, there's actually a dock there with a boat. There are actually a couple of boats uh, anchored next to the old wooden platforms. You can see an office building, uh, which looks like it's supported by four submerged pillars. And uh, you also see 
a couple of other buildings on the shore. Uh, it looks like there's storage, tools, and things like that. You can see out in the distance, uh, there's a couple of structures that are smaller cabins. This is where the campers will will be set up. Most of the campers are going to be right here. What does the uh, like state of all the buildings and like the dock look like? Like, does it look like it's in pretty rough shape, or does it look like it's decently? It, they built? look serviceable. Uh, it looks like you know from your boss, your patron has told you that Steve's been working here for the better part of a year now, trying to get the camp set up for the summer. Uh, this was a camp that used to be functioning, oh, more than about 25, 30 years ago. And since then has kind of been left. There's a groundskeeper uh, here, but generally speaking, nobody really used it in the past two decades. I'll ask, where does the groundskeeper live? Oh, old man Coates? Yeah, he lives over by the... Uh, Where does he live? He lives over. He's a little. He's got a little shack. It's on the other end of the of the of the lake. You can see it right here. Wilbur Coates, Brenda says. I mean, he's a nice man and all, but you know, I don't know. Don't get a good vibe from him all the time. Oh, why not? Why not? What, what does he do? Well, he's just kind of grumpy, and as you can tell, we're all really, we're all really happy. You know, we're just, we just mm -hmm. love, we can't wait for the kids to come. It's going to be great. I'll ask also about the administration. You said there, there's a building there. It was like an office administration building. Yeah. Steve's building his, uh, his cabin right there. That's where he does all his work from. Hey. What about you guys? Where do you all stay? Oh, we have a couple of different cabins. Uh, nearby. Yeah, yeah, the one that you came by, the one that the first one there, uh, that was they were working on. That's going to be uh, one of their cabins, the girls' cabin, and the boys' cabin is right here. As if uh, does Steve ever talk about um, building new structures, building, making the camp, um, you know, more exciting, look look better. Oh, we've got so many, so many projects we're working on. Here, follow me and I'll show you a couple of things. So she brings you up uh, what, towards what's her this name again, cabin. Bobby? What's that? What's her name again? Brenda. Brenda. I'll say, listen here, Brenda, sweetling. Just asking about the administration building. What are the hours of operation? Uh, Well, we don't really have hours because there's no kids yet, but Steve is... Uh, Steve's working pretty much all day. I mean, anytime you want to come in, you just give him a knock, give him a holler. Steve will be... He's very approachable. Best boss I ever worked for. Well, right. that's good. Bo good bosses are hard to find. So if you find yeah. one, then you got to keep it, and then you got you to gotta work real hard, and then and then you get money, right? Yeah, right. that's what you're here for. Yeah, and that's the best thing. We're getting paid quite a bit. I mean, you all know, right? Oh. How, how much are you getting paid? Wait a minute here. Are we allowed to talk about wages here? Because I think I'm getting ripped off. Well, we're all getting 10 gold a week for the summer. What? That's that's not what they well, promise you? Good. That's a lot of money. So. Just wondering. We need needs to be safeguarded. Where, where, where does they keep the gold? Is it in a safe place? That's a good question. I, I actually don't know. Hmm. Maybe Steve would know. Yeah, oh, definitely. Steve... Yeah. I'm Does just looking of... out for you, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Does Steve have a lot of visitors? Does he go into town a lot? Does he, you know... Do he you, only goes in when you... we need supplies, like, you know, we're running low on some, some, uh, some of the construction materials or things like that, but no, I don't... I don't usually see many visitors. Even even the the patrons, they don't come up here. They've been here maybe once ever. Huh. Yeah. Well, I'm sure everyone's going to come once all the renovations are done. Anyway, we've got a lot of work to do, so follow along with me. I'll show you to where you're going to stay. Yeah, I can't ah. wait to see. I hope it's, it's on the lake. Let's just it's get close. this work over with. 
It's close. It's the one that I that you're all standing outside of right now. This one right here. I'm actually going to put the text here just so you can see it. This is your cabin, B4. Mm -hmm. All right. So she says, get yourself situated. And once you're ready, come on back to uh, our cabin. And then we'll, we'll, we'll divvy up some, we'll eat some lunch. We'll divvy up some chores. All right. Okay, thanks so much, Brenda. That was great. Awesome. I just want to ask right. her about the history of this camp. How long has it been here? Oh, the camp? Oof. You know, I mean, long before me. Uh, let's see. I think the last time the camp was in use was something like 27 years ago. Not until then. Not since then, no. Not since then, no. No, it's been mm. a while. I... I mean, I know that it's changed owners, and and now Steve runs it, so I'm sure he's going to bring it back to prominence. From what I've been told, what I've heard is that, you know, 30 years ago or so, this was the place. All the all the wealthy hmm. nobles and royalty from around sent their kids here. They stayed all summer. They would go swimming. They'd have fun activities, arts and crafts. Do you know why it stopped they, being a place? Um... No, not 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 so sure. There's well, I mean, look, every place has its rumors and you know, tall tales. I heard a, a kid drowned. Say, oh. I heard a kid drowned what, what once. Else? Yeah. The kid drowned mm. once. Yeah, I think. Yeah, a kid drowned, and I think that got the camp closed down. Mm. Something like that. Hmm. That's not cool. So what was much strange is they that. never. They never even found the body. Hmm. Yeah. I'll just but one again, more I, question for you, love. Well, I don't know if that's true. I mean, I've, I'm only 18. I don't know. I wasn't even alive, so. Just one more question for you, love. Any security up here? Security? For what? Oh, well, you know, like guards and such. No, of course not. It's a camp. Okay. Of course, it's a silly. Camp. Why would you need security? Right, exactly. And plus, now look, there's like twelve of us here on camp, so we're gonna be fine. Oh yes, we are. Um. All right. So, uh, if if you don't mind, I'll I'll head out. Um, Go ahead. Heading good. Yeah, we'll see you in a few minutes for lunch. I'm so hungry. Oh my gosh, I could eat a whole sandwich. All right. Well, what what work would you like us to, to do until lunch? Well, we got to talk to Ned. Ned's kind of like, I don't know. He's like in charge when Steve's gone. So we'll talk to Ned. Was Ned kind of like when we met him? He was a little fussy, you said? He was the more serious one. He was the one that was telling yeah. Steve even like you're you're like too relaxed. You know, he was more serious. Okay. He was more focused on getting things done. Okie doke. Bill seemed to be more of like a jokester. Mm. Um, Alice was the young one. Uh, Brenda and Marcy, uh, you you got know Brenda pretty well now. She's the taller one. Uh, you haven't really talked to Marcy or... What was the other one? Jack. Who? Jack. Jack, yeah, Jack. You haven't talked to Jack much, yeah. He seems to be the youngest boy. Okay. All right. All right. So let's uh let's head over back towards towards the the main cabin that you entered in. So that'd be B one. Leave your tokens back here, and I'm gonna actually take us off roll twenty for now because we don't need it at the moment. All right. So you head back, and you see everyone is eating PB and J sandwiches. They'll toss you one. Crust on or crust off, says Jack. Yeah, now, where's my, where's my mullet? Where, where, where's my button and, and mold wine like I asked for? What is this? I'll throw it on the ground. Ooh, throw it on the ground. Ned looks at you and he says, you shouldn't be so wasteful. I mean, we have plenty of food, but, you know, no need to That's throw food, food for on a the mouse. I, I need food for a grown halfling. I want some... Mold wine. Immediately, I've had a long day. Give me a and some mutton. Give me I a mutton. 
give me a persuasion or something. Maybe maybe even intimidation because the way you're the way you're forcefully I requesting. I can really intimidate, but I'll try. Uh, let's see. How about uh, I'll do persuasion. Total. Fifteen. So, Ned says, "All right, all right, easy. I get it. Not everybody likes P, B, and J. All right." Uh, Marcy, can you see if you can grab him anything else? Sure thing, Ned. Marcy gets up. She's blonde hair, blue eyed. She seems to be the person who made the sandwiches. Uh, Jack mm. is devouring his. He seems to be the youngest boy. He's just gobbling down his PB and J. He actually looks to the one that's on the ground and he tries to salvage what he can of it. I'm, I'm stuffing it in my mouth going, don't worry, Marcy, these are real good. They are real good. So, uh, so yeah, so where are you all from? This is, uh, Ned talking. I'm from Blackwater. Hmm. All of you from the big city, or? Yep. You don't look like, I don't know, camp counselors to me. You're a bit older, aren't you? I mean, most of us are, I mean, I'm 21, but everybody else here is pretty young what would lead they, uh, you to be camp counsel counselors we're here to help with the renovations that are going on yeah but you're gonna stick on for the summer right of course i was thinking about it i'm pretty good with some glitter so you know i'm a glitter expert <laughs> oh arts and crafts I like it well, what so about I'm you 33, I'm just coming into my manhood yeah that's a bit old don't you think not for a halfling. Yeah, we're young at heart. It's all right. Well, all right. Um, we got a couple of things to do, and you know, people of your elevated age could probably handle. Mm -hmm. By the way, how old is everybody? So, Steve, you're thirty-three, or Gray is thirty-three. How old is everybody else? I wish I were thirty-three. <laughs> Man, I guess I'm in my fifties. Like or 50s? Yeah, okay. it was my <laughs> like, beard. <laughs> what about... Uh, uh, what I don't about know you, how Scott? old kobolds get, but I would assume that they're like the equivalent of 25 human years. Okay. So like younger, but but older than the camp counselors. They say, they say that kobolds, we don't really know how long they live because most of them die within the first like four or five years of life. <laughs> So, so yeah, so I think I'm like I'm like four or five. Yeah, so you've lived to a good a good long ripe age of four or five. Gotcha. So what about I, Yen? Oh, uh, I think I'm I'm honestly like about a hundred years old. But I've again since I'm a powerful sorceress, I've been using my magic to keep myself young. Um, so so I'm younger, or right. I look younger than I actually am. That's not terrifying. Good, good, good. So would you say you look about like you're 18, like these kids, or? Yeah, yeah. Physically, I look like I'm probably about 20. A 20, okay, good. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm not you? very tall either. I'm pretty short, so okay. unintimidating. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> and Lothar, you're the old, you're probably the oldest, so, right? So I, I look around nervous because everybody's saying their age, like 30, 20, and I'm like 150, and I look <laughs> nervously, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm 30. I'm 32 also. <laughs> All right, right on, right on. Well, Zuzu looks like he's got you by a while, by a, a while, but that's just the nature of humans. You know, we age. As many guys this may look guy. old, but I'm young at heart. Yeah. So, so uh, Ned says, "All right, well, I guess you know we'll we'll give you something that you can handle." Uh, well, you tell me what you can handle, okay? Because I don't want to give you too much. I want to throw out your old your old backs. All right. I, would, I, I want to be an entertainer. Oh, yes. I want to entertain the. I can entertain with magic. Well, and, well the and... kids aren't coming for the, at least another couple of weeks. Remember, we've still got a lot of stuff to set up. A lot of heavy well, lifting, old man. Zuzu no, it is, right? Well, I'm great at directing. So I can direct and supervise. Well, that's my job when Steve's gone, so you, we won't need that. I'll shadow you. It's okay. Mm. <laughs> All right. Well, here are some of the options, things that we got to get done before the, the day ends here. All right. Alice... You're transferring the supplies from the shed to the cabins, right? And Alice says, yep, that's what I'm doing. I'll take anybody. If anybody would like to help me, I, I could use the hand. 
You're young. You can handle it. I'll well, I'm going to need at least one person because we've got to pack everything into the cart and move the cart. It's going to take at least three or four trips. I hear all the jobs first before I decide. Oh, okay. We've got a planner here, Ned says. <laughs> Ned seems to be a bit snarky towards you all. A bit ageist as well. And he says, all right, fine. If you don't want to help Alice transfer supplies, maybe you could help Bill. He's going to go uh, uh, check out the... Let's see. He's going he's gonna to check out the camper cabins. Uh, some hungry bears broke into there a couple days ago. We want to make sure that they're cleaned up and, and that there's no other varmint in there. Uh, I think I think I'll go help Alice. I mean, ba- bears and I don't get along, so uh, Alice it is for me. Right on, right on. Well, you you know Brenda. Brenda's going to be going through and checking all of the the status of each of the buildings, making sure that um, we're ready for to receive the ki- kids. So she's going to be going all around. It's a lot of walking. I don't know if you can handle that, old man. But uh, oh no. I was going to say, I want to cast Find Familiar, but I don't think I can cast anything big enough that I could ride on top, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> no. He says, well, Brenda's going to be doing a lot of walking today, so if you feel like getting a good workout in, go with Brenda. Jack here, and Jack the younger boy, so he's going to fix the, some of the boats on the dock. A couple of them got those little leaks, some holes. Uh, he probably needs somebody to help him cleaning those the, the storehouse in there too. Marcy. Uh, Marcy, what are you doing today again? Marcy comes back out. She was, she got uh gray. She's got you some sort of like some sort of meat. You're not too sure what it is. It's, you know, camp cafeteria food. So imagine, you know, food. Like a bite out of it. <laughs> it's like meatloaf of some sort. I'll just stand, stand in my breath. Probably this. I'll wait till she's not looking. I'll throw it. Somewhere. Oh. oh, again with the throw and the food. Well, you didn't. Nobody saw that one. They were all talking about the, the things here. So Marcy says, "I'm going to be going and taking inventory of all the camping gear near the work shed by the caverns." I uh, would love to have some company. Uh, that seems like something I could do. Inventory, keeping track of things. Not yeah. too much heavy yeah. lifting. Yeah. I'll just hitch up my belt and I'll say, well, since there's no foods around here to satisfy me, I'll go hunting and I'll go collecting firewood. That's what I'm best at. Uh, we, we really don't need firewood, though. We've got plenty of it. Oh, I doubt that. I doubt that. And I'll just start walking off towards back where we came from. Okay. Is he always like this? Ned says. Oh, I have no idea. I mean, we spent three days together, but uh, he's not very talkative. So, but he was very good at getting firewood for us at night. So that's good. All right. Yeah, I guess he could. Uh, Brenda, maybe you could just go make sure he doesn't get lost. He doesn't really know everything. Brenda says, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of follow him. Do my do my checks as he wanders around. So Brenda marches off towards Gray. Um, So what do you all want to do? Hey. I would like to quietly cast prestidigitation on my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I'm going to make it taste like a slice of beef Wellington. And then I'm going to lean in and I'm going to say, Ned, you haven't told us what you need help with. How can we help you? Oh, I, uh, I've got a couple other things I'm doing. I'm going to go check out, uh, check on old Mr. Coates. Well, Ned, maybe I could help you with that. Uh, I, uh, he gets really bashful. He goes, I, I, I mean, I, I, I can do it alone. I'm not, you know, I do this all the time. Oh, well, it seems like you all need a helping hand around here. There are plenty of us. And, um, there's something about you. I'm very drawn to you, Ned. Hmm. Well, uh, he kind of rings the collar of his tunic and he goes, it's hot in here, isn't it? Very hot. It's a hot day out. Summer's coming, you could tell. Well, uh, sure. Yeah, I'm going to go check in on Mr. Coates. Uh, if you want to give me a hand, that, that I guess would be okay. We could bring some food to him. 
with love to help you. All right. Let's go bring Mr. Coat some food. All right. Uh, anybody else want to come with us? Anybody else? Oh, that okay. won't be Let's necessary, go, Marcy. Ned. Let's go up to the cavern. Oh, well, you sure? Do you want to go with Marcy? You could come with us. Uh, I'm an old man like I mean, me. Yeah. I don't think I can handle all that walking, Ned. Oh, well. Uh, okay. You, what about you, the dwarf? Loth Lothar, your your name is, right? You want to come with me and Yen? Um... We're I'm okay. Help, I'm gonna go help with the boats. Okay. Alright, so I guess it's just, uh, you and me. <laughs> guess so. Alright. Alright, everybody. Uh, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's get to work. We've got a lot to do. Alright, we want to make sure we make progress before Steve gets back. Alright. So, we're going to break this up. We're going to go starting with... We'll go in the order, right? So, we'll start with Scrappy. We'll go around, mm -hmm. see what happens. Uh, Scrappy, you said you were going to help move supplies Alice. with Alice? Yeah. Gotcha. Yep, move supplies with Alice. She's the youngest of the, the counselors that we saw. Youngest girl, I think. Yep, yep. All right, so Alice is... Uh, she's going to... Her job is to transfer supplies, delivering supplies from the shed... Which is over here. I'll show you where it is. Let's see here. Got to shift so you can you can see it. I'm gonna move over our screen. Who is the so girl here, that was just uh, walking us around before? Brenda. With Brenda. The Brenda. So here is uh, the shed here, and actually I do have tokens for them. I can actually put them here so you can you can see them a bit. I'm sorry, which one's the shed? Uh, top right. The structure in the top right. Uh. Alright, so Brenda's the one that gave you the tour. Alice is the young one. She's got the cool hair. Marcy is the uh, the one that was making food. Uh, you've got Jack, the youngest of the boys, Ned, the one who seems like he's in, in charge here, and then you've got Bill, the one that doesn't seem to take too many things seriously. All right, so let's put them to where they're going. I'm going to put Ned over here, because that's where old man Coates lives. Uh, Yen, you can put your token next to Ned. Jack is going to fix the boats. Bill... Sorry, not Bill. Uh, let's see. Alice is going over to fix... Uh, to move supplies. Marcy. Uh, Bill's going to clean cabins, actually. He's cleaning the kids... The kids' cabins. Let's see here. Where did Bill go? Here's Bill. And then we've got... Marcy. Who's taking inventory. She's going to... The storeroom over here. Oh, look, it's a close walk for you, too, Zuzu. <laughs> Perfect. Over here. All right. And Bill, where's Bill? Go oh, no, sorry, not Bill. Brenda, where's Brenda? Oh, she's going to, she's kind of circling the whole camp. She'll start going, following you. So wherever you're going, Steve, she'll, she'll follow you. Okay. All right. All right, so. Let's begin. We'll start with you, Alice and Scrappy. Alice, I really like your hair. That's amazing. I don't have any hair. I'm very jealous. Yeah, I've fun. been yeah, I've been trying to just make this work. It looks great. Yeah, it, it takes does. A little bit of... Oh my gosh. You gotta give me your secrets. Maybe there's a way to grow my hair. Hmm. It takes a little bit of time. It takes a little bit of time in, in the morning, but you know. Oh, it's totally worth it, girl. You're rocking it. Totally worth it. Okay, so what are we moving here? What we got? I've never met a, a kobold before. Are all of you this friendly? Uh, I don't know. I've, I've very rarely met some kobolds, but, oh, you know, that's... Right. I'm pretty cool. I think fair I'm pretty cool. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to... We're going to move all these supplies, and she opens up this rickety old warehouse, basically, or this, like, kind of like barn, basically. And inside it, you can see that there are all sorts of different 
supplies for the camp. There is the traditional sort of, uh, you know, things the camp kids would be using, uh, crafts and things like that. But you also have like wood planks. Uh, you've got tools, things to fix uh, the buildings and the structures. It looks like there's quite a bit. In fact, roughly, there are over a thousand pounds worth of material to move. And there is a oh. rickety old rolling cart. Okay. And, and she says, "All right, let's start. Let's start moving some things, bringing them onto the cart." Oh, oh no! And she moves over the cart. It looks like one of the sides of the cart is a bit lower. The wheel looks like it snapped off the axle. Oh no! Well, well, that's not good. Uh, what do you what do you think we should do? Are, are there any extra wheels around here? Uh, uh, no, there's no extra wheels, but. Steve's good at fixing things like this. Uh, darn. We're probably just gonna have to carry this by hand now. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I mean, no offense to you. I don't think we're strong enough to carry all this stuff. Plus, there's a lot of it. Like, all, yeah, and, a lot of and this. And we need to bring it to all the cabins, so uh, they're all over the place. Uh, do you think, um, I, um, I don't know. Oh, gosh. Uh, oh, this stinks. Um, Do you know how to fix what? wagons? I mean, probably not. You want me to try? I can try. I can take a look at it. Let me see. Yeah. Um, can I Give see? Give me an investigation check. Sure. Four. So, nope, looks fixed to me, guys. You, you have no <laughs> idea how to fix this cart, so that's going to be something you'll have to reckon with later but yeah so uh alice says all right well look let's just start moving some stuff we'll carry as much as we can we'll bring it to the cabins closer to everything and and ned will ned will coordinate tell us what to do next yeah What's i your... think uh i think uh i think bill's bill's at the cabins right so if we go maybe he knows how to fix something so we could take like one load over there and then maybe we can bring him back and he can take a look Ooh, that's a great idea. Yeah, Bill Bill is better at fixing things, so he's going to fix up the cabins. Maybe he could fix up the wagon wheel. We'll stop by on the way back. Uh, start grabbing some things. She's just grabbing some tools and wood blanks. Um, I grab, like, the, the smaller-ish stuff. Like, he, she may be grabbing the planks, but I'm grabbing, like, the nails and the hammer and sure. smaller things. Sure. Um, yeah. And I'm just so kind of piling them on top very precariously. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You're small <laughs> anyway, right? So it's, yeah, everything's precarious. <laughs> you hear a noise, though, as you're gathering things. Alice is just about to leave the the, uh, the warehouse here, the storage room. Mm -hmm. And you hear, like, something shuffling from within the shadows in the back. You have dark vision, but you can't see anything at first glance. Hmm... Hey, uh, 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 Alice, do, do you know if you have rats or anything? I mean, I heard about the bears, but is there is there anything else that you saw around here? Oh, oh gosh, I hope we don't have rats. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, do you can I roll a perception? Um, sure. In, like, the area? Yeah. Oh, you know what? We're just getting all these bad rolls out of the way immediately, so six on perception. There's some no, stuff back there. <laughs> you don't hear or see anything right now, but you definitely heard something before. Okay. Uh, There's a small shuffling, like something knocked something over or moved it out of place. Plenty of yeah, tools think, and things to move. I think it would bother me if I heard shuffling and didn't do anything about it, especially if something like hit something. Um, can I kind of like ease my way back there and be like, hello, hello, can you help us carry things? <laughs> You, you kind of call out, and you look, and you wait, and you listen, and you don't hear anything. And then, from out behind one of the stacks of wood planks, something lunges at you. Oh, I'm going to throw all of the nails that I have in my hands out at the thing. Can I just, like, immediately throw the boxes of nails at it? Sure, this just black void is coming at you. You throw the nails and tools that you had in your hands up in the air, it, and then you hear this loud screeching, Rah! and it's this black cat that now scampers off out of the storage facility past you and Alice. 
Oh, it was just a dumb cat. And now oh, I gotta yeah. pick up all these nails. <laughs> yeah. That's Cougar. That's Steve's cat. I don't know how he got in here. He shouldn't be in this part of the camp. Or at least he must have got locked in here. Poor thing. He's probably starving. Freaking cat in. I'm just like yeah. mumbling. Like, freaking cat and picking up all the nails again. And I'm like, okay, freaking cougar. I'm not going to freaking eat you for dinner. Um, Yeah, and I, I, it's going to take me a couple, not that we're in initiative, but a couple rounds to clean yeah. up all these nails. <laughs> yeah, totally. And they're all, they were all organized by size, by, by type. Oh, yeah. No, no I made a full map. It could. The only thing was would be glitter. I oh, mean, that's yeah, just craft yeah. herpes at this point. So <laughs> I mean, I <laughs> luckily Alice has all the glitter. She's got all the arts supplies. <laughs> She's got it on top of her wood planks. So we're good there. All right. So you're headed back. OCD. What's that? The scrappy have OCD. Oh, I don't no, know. No, no. I just I you just eat it for a really long time. Right. <laughs> All right, so you're headed back, and you're going to stop by to get Bill's help at these uh, camper cabins. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, now we'll go to Zuzu. Zuzu, you're following Marcy, right? Yep. Good. So Marcy takes you up to one of the work sheds, a similar work shed. It's old and rickety, but this one looks like it's a bit more sturdy, a bigger one than the one I described for Scrappy. This one uh, inside has quite a bit in here. Uh, and it's near the caverns. Where to? Where to show you here? Let's bring you over here, Gavin. Right, right here, right? Yep. So there's a, a cavern. It's like kind of like a mine entrance that you pass. You can see it off in the distance. Uh, the hexes, by the way, are about 150 uh, feet. So everything here is relatively visible. It's not a massive campgrounds that would take you like an hour to get to one side or the other. But but still, you're here at the at the the where this little shed. And Marcy, uh, she says, all right. So she hands you a parchment, some scroll. Uh, uh, she gives you some ink well. And she says, what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that we have enough of the supplies for everyone. Um, you know, we had we had some bear attacks at some of the cabins. So I, I, I appreciate you coming because I get a little freaked out when I go by myself. I, un I understand. I can't. I don't know what how much I'll help with a bear, but... I guess two is better than one. Yeah. Like I said, Bill, he seems to be like the animal tamer. Anytime there's a raccoon or a squirrel, he can handle it, get it out of here. I, I'm i not so great with animals, to be honest. I, I you know, I know I'm working here at camp and everything, but I'm more of a, of a chef. Uh, you know, and oh. I... So... Michael, and what's your, do you like cooking new things for the campers? Yeah, well, you know, I gave your friend Gray my... my uh, Meatloaf surprise. All right, that was. My I'm sure it was lovely. I'll have to try it. Yeah. Well, you know, when everything's going bad, you don't want it to like really rot, so you throw it all in together, throw it in a meatloaf, put it in there. Mm -hmm. You add some spices, and it's it's good to go. That's very resourceful of you. Yeah. Well done. There's nothing wrong with eating. I've eaten it before many times. There's nothing. <laughs> it's edible, 100. percent I yeah. I flavored it the right way. So. Of course. <laughs> Um, so you must go anyway, through I'll a be, lot of spices. <laughs> I'll also be cooking us all dinner tonight. So you have that Excellent. to look forward to. All right. Excellent. All right. So uh, yeah, here, here's the key. It's dark in there. Do you think you could open the door? Sure. I'm going to open the door and I'm going to cast um, light on maybe an object that I have on hand. Maybe maybe the pen Sure. that I'm holding. Cool. Yeah. So you, you cast light and she goes, oh, that's a fancy trick. I'm glad you came with me. <laughs> I'm not so a you open fan the door. The dark. You open the door, and inside you can see uh, that there are all sorts of foodstuffs in here, preserved foodstuffs, barrels and and sacks full of root vegetables, things like that. So she says, go around and just you know do a quick count on how much you know estimate for for the things that you can't really count, uh, but everything else. Start writing it down. I'll start on the left, you start on the right, and we'll meet in the middle. Sounds good? Sounds good. I'm going to start working my way through. So, so where'd and you then, learn magic? I mean, before I before she mentioned that, I'm going to ask, did Steve know what he needed to go get before he went into town? Oh, he's not getting food. He's getting more uh, building supplies. Yeah. Okay. 
Or at least that's what he told us, yeah. He always comes back with something fun, too, though. Perfect. So I'm going to start, just keep working around. Are, there, are things really high up? Like, are there yeah. things that are... Yeah, there's a okay. little ladder in there that you can use to get up on a higher shelf. Okay. Pickles and stuff like that. All those canned goods. Well, not canned, but jarred goods. Jarred. <laughs> so where'd you learn magic? Oh, many, many years of of studying i um you know i started at a at a very young age my whole family um were magic users and it was only my duty to keep it going wow that's impressive so a lot of pressure on you huh yeah yeah these old bones can't take it much more yeah what's it like getting old uh not good one day you just wake up and then everything just starts making noises and you know it's usually around like 30, I heard, is when that happens. <laughs> when you say that you hear noises and everything, right? Yeah. Almost after that statement, immediately hear the sound of some sort of branch or twig snapping outside of the cabin. I say, hey, my knee sounds just like that. And... Oh, I thought that was your knee. That wasn't your knee? <laughs> no, that wasn't my knee at all. <laughs> oh, what is it then? And she looks out the door. You see a shadow now cast... It's mid-afternoon, right? So you see a shadow cast uh, on the entrance. It's a big, hulking shadow. It looks like a. It looked whatever is casting this is probably much bigger than a human. Yeah, so it would, it would it would be something that was outside casting a shadow in, right? It's not like a blob or anything that can. Correct. It's a shadow. Right, I'm gonna, I'm going to kind of take a few steps forward with the quill in my hand just to try to see if if this is like darkness that I could then see through with the light or what's going on here. When you put the light up to the door frame, the shadow that's being cast does disappear, but you hear a sniffing sound and like a snorting. I'm say is it, it's, it's Marcy, right? I'm with you're with Marcy. Yeah. I'm like Marcy. Do you guys have a dog? Uh, no. Uh, all right. I'm going to tell her to kind of, I'm going to tell her to stay back and I'm going to can I walk a little bit closer to the door as if I'm getting I'm about to like maybe want to sh shut it or is there any windows? There are no windows but there are um, there's the big the big door that you opened and it's wide open right now. You could close it but as you get close to the door you can see what's casting the shadow. Sniffing along the ground is a brown bear. Oh jeez. Um, it doesn't seem to notice you yet. I'm going to turn to Martha and just t like kind of like tell her to be like really quiet um, can I grab a piece of the vegetable or anything that might be at hand to kind of throw out the door sure to try to distract it yeah so you throw the vegetable out the door what do you what do you pick what vegetable a, 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 a carrot you throw a carrot out the bear looks at it notices you and then it starts to come closer. It ignores the carrot, and it comes closer to you. Oh, no. Um, what do I have? Oh, God, it's a bear. Oh, it's a bear. It's, hey, Darcy, get back. Get back. Climb up the ladder. She's up on the, the ladder. <laughs> uh, is there another ladder I can climb up? Nope. Um, <laughs> Bears are good climbers. You know that, though, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm going to... No, I don't want to do that. She uh, says, do something, do something, use magic. I'm going to cast like a, a ray of frost like on the floor. Uh, not at the bear, but at the floor to see if, if we're to walk forward, it might start to slip. All right, um, so give me a, give me a, I think we're, this might be more of a attempt to scare the bear away, would you say? Yeah. So give me a, either an intimidation or a hand, handle, animal handling check. Let's see. Intimidation or handling animal. Um, what am I better at? Let's see. Or an andal animal. <laughs> well, intimidation. I'm gonna do animal handling because the other one would be terrible. Uh, that is a fifth. Nope, a sixteen. Wow! Look at you. So you <laughs> cast ray of frost on the ground, and it gives this sheen of ice on the floor, even if it's momentarily. 
the bear seems to be frightened by it and turns tail and runs. Oh, thank God you were here. That was I'm so close. glad it didn't. I'm so glad that dwarf didn't come. <laughs> I want to say, uh, um, I'm wondering if this was the same bear that broke into the cabins. We should probably tell Bill. Yeah, no, Ned. We should tell Ned. Let's Ned. go tell him now. Let's go. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah. I right. grab whatever inventory we did do and, you know. Yeah. We'll say you worked for I... a few hours. You know, this conversation happened over a couple hours. It's not like, you know, yeah. the first thing you saw. Then I firebolt the ice so that we don't slip. Okay. And it melts and we won't. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right. We're going to skip Yen for a second. We're going to go to Lothar. Lothar, I, you're uh, with Jack. My ears, are, my ears are ringing currently. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> Something must be happening. Somebody Lothar. must be talking about me. Well, Jack is talking about you. Wow, so you're a you're a paladin? You're a knight? Yeah. Oh my yeah, gosh. something like that. Wow, so what what can you do? What powers do your god give you? Um, well, you know, I can swing this hammer pretty pretty good, you know. Um, oh my gosh, that is that's so cool. That's lit. That's what? That is no, so it's lit. A, it's a hammer. <laughs> it's a hammer, not not a torch. No, I know, but it's uh, well, Never mind. Anyway, th that's awesome. Have you gone on adventures? Oh yeah, all the time. You know this. This one is just another notch in the book. You know, I'm okay. a I'm a veteran at this kind of thing. Wow. So you can it's fix a boat, cool. no problem, right? Yeah. Sure. As long as it's not too far gone, you know. So you get to the uh, docks, and you can see one of the boats there. Um, is actually out of the water. It's turned topside or upside down, whatever. And you can see that there's got, it's got a clear hole and it. it looks like something must have pierced it. And and it, it looks like it's frayed, splintered. So Jack says, well, here are all the tools. He comes out of the, the woodshed and he brings out a box of tools. And he says, I mean, I haven't fixed a boat before, but Ned seems to think that it's the same as patching a hole in a wall. So I'm going to do it. Um, yeah, I'll teach you a thing or two. You see that hole right there? I think that's what's causing the boat to leak. Oh, okay. That, that's the problem right there. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, um, do you want to start or me? Um, well, I guess you can, you know, since you've never fixed one before, I'll give you the chance to give it a shot. All right, cool, cool. So you're going to aid him, right? Yep. Give him a roll. Just give me a d20 roll. I'll tell you what, what you get. Just the plain D20? Yep. And an 18. An 18. Okay, so you work on it for about two hours to start. Um, he doesn't really know what he's doing. He's taken out, like, all these different sort of um, different tools that you probably don't need, like screwdrivers, wrenches, these things you don't need. He takes out, finally, uh, what appears to be some sort of hammer and some sort of paste liquid thing that he mixes together. He's going to try to patch this boat up and as you're doing this he says to you so I'm sure you all heard right the legends around here hmm i heard more like rumors i don't know about legends why don't gets, you um, elaborate there he gets real wide-eyed you can see this just bright smile on this young kid he's like well 27 years ago the slasher struck. What did he strike? Well, see, my, my dad used to come to this camp, all right? And he's a bit older than that, but when he was here, he had heard rumors that a kid that drowned once actually didn't drown. There was this creepy man in the woods, and he used a, a hatchet or something and he just disemboweled the kid. I heard there was never a body found. How do we know this? Well, what I heard from my dad, again, he was he was here. He was a little older than the kid, but he was here when it happened. He said that the body did turn up. It turned all the water in the lake red. But then whoever owned the camp at that time, they got rid of the body 
before people could start asking questions. Interesting. Yeah. And you said your dad told you this? Yeah, he used to he used to go here when he was a kid. Hmm. Huh. It's interesting that you decided to come after your dad told you that story. Yeah, well, it's it's not true. Oh, you don't believe your dad? No, I mean, he told it to me like it's, it's supposed to be a spooky story. That's oh, he was trying to scare you. Yeah, okay. but you this this is a this is the myth. That myth people is, tell this one. That that myth is um lit. You should hear Steve tell it. Huh? Steve does a really good. Oh, it's lit for sure. Yeah. Steve tells a great r version of it um, at the campfire. Maybe tomorrow night or something when we're singing Kumbaya. We could do that. Okay, yeah. So Steve's Tell's not story. here tonight, right? No, he'll be back tomorrow. Oh, okay. Does anybody look after his place since there's bears roaming around these parts? I mean, it's locked up. I'm sure bears can't open locks. That's true. They could right. break wood, though. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I mean, Ned's kind of in charge. Yeah. Okay. So you're working on fixing the boat. Give me one more check. D20 again? D20. You're using his woodworking skills here. Uh, a 12. A 12. All right. With his bonuses, after about six hours in total, you patch it up, and it's now getting getting dark. It's time to go in anyway. So seems to be good. All in a day's work. You fixed all the boats? Yep, you fixed the boat. Well, it was one boat. Oh, the other boats, okay. you checked them all, and they seem seaworthy. Excellent. You did a lit job. Lothar, as you're cleaning up the tools for the day, about to pack it up and walk back, the sun, you can't tell, but you see some sort of light in the water. For a brief moment, you do a double take. Like Hard under to tell, the water was it this... or reflecting on the yeah. water? Yeah. What... Give me a perception check. A seven. <laughs> yeah, it must have been the sun's reflection. Your eyes playing tricks on you. Ah, okay. All right. All right, so you head back to, to camp. You can move your token as well. Which was camp again? Uh... Is it the ones on the water? It's this one. Oh, okay. I'll actually bring that up as well. I'll put a little marker next to it so you can see it. So everybody knows this is where the rest of the camp, camp counselors hang out. All right. Yen. That was I, yes. You and Ned head over towards the opposite end of the lake. You actually feel like you can you can maybe even make out or see uh, Lothar on the other end. You don't really hear much. You can't hear him, but you do see like the the sheds and the, the docks from this side as well. So on your way over, Ned says, "All right, look, uh, I'm just going to check on Mr. Coates. It's probably going to be quick, uh, you know, but he can be long winded. All right, so." I try to just be polite. You know, he's an old man, like your friend, uh, the dwarf and the, and the and the Zuzu. Um, but let's try not to, like, keep the conversation going. I'd prefer to just drop off some food, say some pleasantries and leave. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Absolutely, Ned. Whatever you need, I'm here for you. Oh, okay. Good. Uh, so, uh, as you're walking up, where are you all from? What do you, what do you, uh, what's your, what's your life like? Oh, I've, I've been in many places. I fought in many battles. Uh, I've, suffice to say, I come from a hard place. But then I went to school, probably like you did, and I learned some skills that helped me out in life. Oh, you're an adventurer. Sure, sure, oh, we okay. can put it that way. Um, so you, you're just here for the summer. I like to, I like to go wherever life takes me. 
right now I'm here because, well, I, I really, I recently lost someone, somebody who was like a daughter to me. Mm. And I, I heard that this is a wonderful camp. And now that I'm here, you know, I'm excited to meet some kids. And I'm so glad that they have such a responsible go-getter like you to take care of them when Steve's not around. Oh, well, uh, thanks, you know, all in a day's work. <laughs> so, uh, Ned, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things that Steve asks you to do, you know, since you're so, so responsible and you do such a good job of taking care of the camp? What's in a day's work for you, Ned? Oh, well, you know, I make sure everything gets done around here. Sometimes being the oldest of the counselors has its drawbacks. You know, I feel like I I don't really relate to all of them on everything, but I make sure they do their jobs, make sure they get work done and they don't goof off. You know, you got to watch out. Uh, Bill and Bill and Marcy, you know, I think they've got a thing going on. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, I definitely know what it's like to be the oldest and most responsible person in a group. So thank you for the heads up about Bill and Marcy. And Ned, if you need support, you know where to find me. Uh, I'm, I'm all right. I'm a good. I'm good. You know, I manage myself. So uh, oh, here we are, Mr. Coates' house. Goes by the name Wilbur, mm -hmm. he says. He explains that uh, as you're approaching this uh, uh, lakeside cabin, that Mr. Coates has been here for many years. In fact, he used to be the old groundskeeper uh, before the camp got shut down. And in fact, uh, he's been living on the campgrounds ever since. I mean, there's only one person, so he couldn't take, take care of everything. That's why we're fixing things up. But, you know... Like I said, he's a nice guy, bit long-winded. Let's just drop off the meatloaf and then head out. Okay? Whatever you need. All right. So he knocks on the door. And uh, after a brief moment of waiting, you hear a shuffling of feet. And Mr. Coates comes out. And actually, I do have a description of this shack, too. So Wilbur Coates lives in a humble shack on the lake. You can see that there is a dock. However, there is no rowboat here. Um, the shack looks like it's probably the oldest of the cabins you've seen and in the worst condition, even though it's the one that's inhabited. And yeah, so you see a old man open the door. I'm going to actually bring his token in. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's got a good token, actually. Oh, yeah, really good token here. Uh, this is actually, as I probably said in the description about this module, this was made for, for Roll20 by DM Dave. And Ooh. this is the... Oops, that's Bill. I want to go bring you over here. Here's Wilbur. All right. And Wilbur's a cutie. Yeah, he's, he's a cutie. He's an old man, long beard. He does have a cane that he kind of uses to assist him in walking around. Although he does look like he's capable, right? He's 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 not he's not a feeble old man. All right, so Wilbur opens the door and he goes, "Ah, guests. Ned. Is this the meatloaf surprise Marcy was raving about?" And he says, "Yes, Mr. Coates. Here you go. Uh, you know, we've got a lot going on today, so no, come on in. Come, come, please." And Oh my, who is this fine young lady? I, I fluff up my hair a little bit and I extend my hands as if, you know, like <laughs> expecting him to kiss my hand. And I say, you must be Wilbur. He'll grab your hand and shake it. <laughs> and he says, well, it's unexpected surprise. Come in, come in. I look at Ned. Shall we? <sighs> All right. You head into this old cabin, and it's, it is what you think, very simplistic, rudimentary, 
It's just the necessities and nothing more. There's a small bed in one corner, uh, a small kitchen table, a wood-burning stove, and you can see him sit down. He pours you some sort of hot beverage, and he says, Well, camp's looking great. I assume Steve is going to want to... Uh, Gonna want to start on time then, huh? And Ned says, yeah, we're, we should be on schedule. You know, we should be making things out. Well, here, now we have the extra help. Points to you again. Here to serve. Says, well, I sure do hope that everything goes off smoothly. And I'll be here to make sure nothing goes wrong. What are some things that have gone wrong in the past, Wilbur? Well, I'm sure you've all heard of the young young boy that drowned uh, some odd 30 years ago. His no, body was no. never found, right? Yep, yep, body was mm -hmm. never found. I mm -hmm. searched this place high and low, out on that lake every day, looking for him. Poor little Johnny. Well, uh, I don't want to... so hard for you. Yeah, I don't want to bring up the past all the time, but I sure hope that now, going forward, we could put this tragedy behind us. So what are some things that Steve is asking us to do to prevent these kinds of tragedies? What can well, for, we do? For one thing, now you got a bigger staff. Going to have people watching these kids at all times. You have somebody monitoring the bunks, monitoring the boats. Right, all right. And uh, with with all these extra people, um, I guess that means Steve can now go and do his trips. Has he always made his trips like this? Going overnight, disappearing for a while. Ned says, yeah, yeah, he goes he goes often whenever we need supplies. Mulber mm -hmm. says, I, you know, I don't really get myself involved too much. I'm just here monitoring the grounds, making sure nothing goes wrong. Think of me like a security guard. So, Wilbur, what have you been doing for the last 27 years that the camp was closed? Well, well you know, it was left in the estate that I could keep my job here. So I did maintain the grounds Made sure the buildings didn't fall apart. I mean, they've they've seen some some wear and tear here, but they they could be in shambles easily if it wasn't for me. Wow, that sounds like so much work for one person, maintaining all of this land for twenty seven years, all alone. Yep. Were you alone, Wilbur? Yep, I live here by myself. Now, you know, there's a story I once heard about a man who lived by himself. And then he goes on into a long-winded analogy of some story, an old fable of a man who lived alone. But the punchline of the joke is basically that nobody ever nobody ever told him what to do and didn't have to live with any uh, any wife telling him what to do. <laughs> no yes, little misses yes. running around the house. Ah, marriage is more of a prison than people may realize, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And I give him a, a knowing look and I nod. So he says, uh, so, uh, you two. You guys in charge now? Steve's gone. I'm here to serve. Ned is our director, and I, I give Ned a look. He's so responsible. So we are all here to help Ned today. Whatever Ned needs from us. All right. Well, listen, you all. I uh, hate to take the food and kick you out, but I got a couple things of myself to attend to. No more long-winded stories today. And Ned says, thank God. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, well, uh, thank you, Mr. Coates. We'll be uh, on our way. Uh, Yen, thank you. Thank you. Come on. Come on. Let's go. And uh, so as we go, as the door is closing, I quietly once again cast Prestidigitation, and I make his meatloaf taste like a beef wellington. Mm. Super into beef wellington. Oh, this is wonderful. Tell Marcy she she really hit it out of the park this time. 
give him a wink. Close the door. Right. Bon appetit, Mr. Coates. So, you head out as well. You and uh, Ned are headed back to the cabin. He says, all right, so I've got a couple of things to clear out of the cabins. If you want to help me do that, we can we can go back and do that. Sure. Lead the way. So he heads you back. You head back towards the the cabin that you originally started from, and you're headed out from from the uh, the little shack here, and you hear a strange sound. It's almost like a a, a warbling sound, like something of something in more modern day you might hear like an electronic device making. It kind of seems to come from all around you. You can't really pinpoint the direction. And then for a moment, it's gone. Steve says, hey, you all right? Or uh, Ned. Ned says, hey, you all right? Did you just, did you hear that? Hear what? That, that noise? Something, something's not right here. He pauses and he listens. Nope. I mean, it's kind of loud by the lake. Get the lapping of the water. Maybe it's the nail hammering going on over there. I hear your your friends doing on the boats. I think it was that. Well, keep your eyes peeled. Let me know if you see anything weird. All I right. have a strange feeling. Yeah, that is strange. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, carry on, right? All right, so you head back towards the main cabins. You can move your token. All right, so now we go to Steve. Gray. Gray is headed to the southern side. I'm heading of... up, I'm yeah. heading up towards uh, Steve's cabin, actually. Oh, Steve's cabin. Okay. And Brenda says, oh, well, we don't have to check Steve's cabin. There's nothing there. And that's in good shape. I'll say, well, what... Why don't you come up and walk with me, my lass? Tell me, what's wrong with your friend, poor old Neddy? Oh, Ned? What's wrong with him? Well, he seems to have a bit of a stick up his arse, doesn't he? Uh, I guess I'm sometimes. I'm saying this as I'm walking around the perimeter of the cabin, picking up whatever, like, would pass for firewood. But um, what I'm doing is I'm looking to see where the windows are, where the doors are. If there are any side entrances. Yeah, there's no maybe, side entrance. Like, Obviously, the cabin's okay. not a you know, massive structure, but it has uh, windows along the perimeter, and mm -hmm. you've got uh, the front door, obviously, which is which is which uh, has a padlock on it. I'm going to try... I'm going to memorize where all the windows are. And, mm -hmm. um, what about the foundations? Are there any, like... Um, are, they, are they sound or, like... Give yeah, me an investigation. Or that might be like, you know, like like rotting some something could crawl into. Investigation check. Okay. Brenda's walking with you and she says, What are you yeah, doing? I'm just walking to her and like, you know, oh, what why don't you, you help me with this wood while we're at it? Yeah, the the, the floor the, the the foundation of the of the cabin looks solid. I mean you can't really you can't really tell too much from the outside, but it probably does have a basement. It does look like you take a couple of steps up to get to the front door, so maybe there's a basement level. Um, she says, well... Is there, a, is there a back door? No back door. Okay. She says, Steve's cabin's structurally all right, though. All the other cabins need work. Oh, they're beautifully done, my last. Beautifully done. Now start walking towards the administration building. Well, when you start walking away from Steve's cabin, mm -hmm. Brenda's following you, you see Bill on his way towards the student or the camper camp cabins, and he gives a loving look towards Brenda, and Brenda kind of gives a quick wave back, and and then Bill says, looks and sees you, like, investigating the house, and he goes, everything all right? Oh, just getting some firewood. Okay, well... Don't take any wood from the building. This, did I notice this exchange between the two of them? Oh, I mean, it was so obvious. All right, so I'll turn around and tell her. I said, oh, if you, if you like to go off and be with your friend, uh, I can handle this very well on my own. 
just getting firewood. All right. Well, like I said, I'll be around. And I'll give her a Like I was young once, you know. Yeah. Give me a holler. We'll, we'll be around. I'm sure, you know, look, if you need something, I'm sure one of the councils will be there. Uh, Bill, do you want to, uh, she nods her head over to the right towards this camp, ca uh, counselor, excuse me, camper cabins. And Bill's like, uh, oh yeah, yeah, let's, uh, yeah, let's go. We can inspect those first. You go okay. on with your inspection, inspection there, Billy boy. All right. All right, so... Then I'll walk up to the, uh, cabin. I'll proceed to walk up to the administration cabin. Holding so some it's firewood not, in my arms. It's not administrative cabin. That's... Steve's cabin is kind of like the administrative cabin. The fishermen... Okay. Um, the, the docks there. There is another building, though, that would be... Was it kind of office, you said? It's like an office, exactly. It's an office. It's a... It's actually, I guess you would consider it to be more of like the, the health office. Hmm. Okay. Um, it, it's where this, where the token is? Yeah. Near Jack. Yeah. Jack's, although he's, he's him and you see uh, Lothar, they're fixing the boats. Uh, right. You know, a couple hundred feet away from you. All right. Well, I'll try to, I'll try to sneak into the forest around the cabin so they don't see me. Sure. And I'll can, do the same thing there. I'll just, like, you know, walk around the perimeter, memorize where the entrance exits are, and notice if it's... Sure. Try to know if the, like, front door is padlocked, too, how many windows there are. Yeah, the front door is padlocked. There are a few windows around, no back door. Uh, inside, you can see that this is, like, a health office. They've got, uh, you know, like, sick beds, little mm. cots. You see some first aid supplies, things like that. Okay. Um, is it getting darker out, or? It's getting darker now, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll go back this way, and where were, where were we meeting for this campfire? Uh, back by the counselor's cabin. All right, I'll start walking back down that way. Okay, so you've inspected the two buildings, and you head back. Yeah. All right. All right. Now, we go to Scrappy. Scrappy, move your token, and I'll move Alice towards the camp camper cabins. Sure. All right. Oh, so no, are we going to walk into something that I don't want to walk into? <laughs> oh, no. So you, you uh, head towards the cabins, and there's three of them in a row. You can see little areas for the campfires on the map there, uh, where the kids probably at nighttime would roast marshmallows and things like that. And you, you do hear some noise coming from the cabins a couple of voices they're very loud as well okay um mm, hey uh alice i thought i thought no one was staying here yet yeah nobody's nobody's here at camp just for the staff why uh do you, do you hear people i feel like i hear people are they just in my head no i hear it. i think it sounds like bill's doing some work maybe somebody else is in there with him oh okay yeah we gotta talk to bill so uh i guess let's go there yeah, you've got all your hands full of supplies and <laughs> materials. Yeah. Um, so you head up to the first cabin here, which is where the noise is coming from. And you do hear the, the sound of joy and pleasures coming from the room. Alice says, uh-oh, I guess maybe Bill and... and uh, Oh, wait. Oh, it's Brent. Wait, it's Brent. Oh, I, I just made some drama here. It's Brenda. Oh, my gosh. Whoops. <laughs> well, Bill and Brenda are in the in the cabin. <laughs> I accidentally created drama. Marcy is not going to be happy about this, but I'm going with it. All right. Bill and Brenda. <laughs> you hear the, the, the sounds of of joy and pleasure coming from the cabin. Alice says, uh, all right, well, must Bill and Marcy must be in here. Why don't we head back and we'll 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 just meet up with them later. Well, well, what are we supposed to do with all the stuff? Well, we'll bring it to the main cabins, but, you know, we'll just have to do a couple of trips. It's the way it is. No, 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 no. They'll, they'll, they'll be fine. And I, I clearly don't know what's happening. I am. <laughs> this is not something that I'm used to. I'm just going to just open the door and be like, hey, Bill. Hey, Bill. You see, there's like a 
a bunch of it's it's, it's counselors or excuse me I keep saying counselors I meant to say campers it's camper bunks right so like in, behind one of the camper bunks you just see like Bill all confused hair in a in a fray looks up and he goes oh uh, this room's taken 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 by who <laughs> uh, I'm uh doing some work in here can't you see can you uh and Alice is not at the door. Alice kind of has an idea of what's going on. So Alice is like standing off 30 feet to the to the side here. She's like kind of by the tree line. And she goes, um, Bill says, uh, just uh, just me in here. Nothing, nothing, nothing wrong here. Mm, okay, man. Well, uh, the, the wagon broke. We, we need we need your help fixing the wheels. So we're going to drop this stuff off. You want to meet us back there? Yeah, yeah, I'll meet you there in, let's say, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes, and then you hear a, a thud. I mean, uh, uh, 35 minutes, 40 minutes? Uh, make it a half hour. I'll, I'll see you in a half hour, okay? okay? yeah, 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 sounds good, okay. sounds good. Okay. okay, bye, Brenda! And I, I close the door. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you close the door. Wait, oh, and... Uh, Bill and Brenda's in there. I saw the ponytail. She says, must have been Marcy, right? No, 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 yeah, she had a ponytail. Oh, oh. Oh boy. All right. Well, listen, you don't seem to understand what's going on here. Let's just not talk about this. It's going to be awkward with the other counselors, especially Marcy. So let's just, you know, avoid this. Uh, okay. Okay, sure. Right. So you carry your stuff back to the cabins. And uh, everybody, after your day's worth of chores are done, you head, you head to the main cabin. Uh, let's see here. So it's going to be this one that you you came to first, B1. And uh, you're going to be eating dinner. Let's see. Hold on one second. Yeah, dinner. Oh, sorry. I, I lied to you. You're not in this cabin anymore. You're in... Here you go. B4. Okay? That's the one you're going to stay in. They figured that since you're still getting set up, you're going to be there for... They'll bring the dinner to you. Right. So you all gather around for dinner. All of the counselors come with you as well. Ned, Mr. Coates doesn't come with you. Marcy. And we'll say uh, once you did get back, Christian, Zuzu and Marcy talk to Ned and, Jen and Yen. And the four of you kind of decide to do the inventory together that way you could scare off any wild animals yeah yeah we fill them in on what we saw and everything like that yeah exactly lothar you and uh jack also join you come straight from the docks you smell like fishing supplies and tackle you know it, it, you kind of smell like probably the grossest but you know like you come time. in you get washed up for dinner um everyone i just want to pause for one quick second i'm like freezing in my basement i guess i didn't turn the heat on I'm going to pause this for a second and get a jacket. I'll be right back. All right. I got my jacket or sweatshirt. We're back. Mm -hmm. So you gather around into your cabin for dinner. The counselors all bring the food that Marcy has prepared. And everyone is here except for two. Brenda is suspiciously missing. So is Bill. Marcy, who you know is very fond of Bill he says I wonder where Bill went but he was supposed to he was supposed to meet me earlier and now uh he's not here um just a side note did he meet us a half hour later or did he not meet us at the at our cat our place oh right you that's right you said to meet later I apologize yeah, yeah, yeah. no so you were supposed to and uh, uh meet him about a half an hour and uh, yeah. he never showed no, so you okay. end up lugging all that stuff back and forth, back and forth to different cabins. It was annoying. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. I turned to Marcy and be like, yeah, that jerk stood us up too. I had to carry everything. Oh my gosh, he was supposed to help us fix the wheel on the crate, and he didn't do that. And then uh, it was so much more work. He's on my sh shit list. Oh. Not cool, man. Anybody seen Brenda? Oh, Ned last says. I saw Brenda, she was under Bill. Marcy, what? What do you mean under Bill? That's that's where she was. 
I'll start cracking up hysterically. That's what do you get when you trust a man? And I'm, just says, eating. Hey. I'm like, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking around curiously, like, <laughs> okay. Ned's like, hey, what do you mean, trust a man? Oh. Oh. <clears throat> that wasn't for you, Ned. Sorry. <clears throat> Just trying to help us. Trying yeah. to help Marcy feel a little better, if you know what I mean. I would never say that about you, Ned. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, anyway. I'm gonna slide over to Yen. I say, you always trust the halfling, you know, sweetling. Okay. <laughs> it's not a problem with the halfling. It's it's Gray Greg Dougal, right? That's your name? Yeah. It's Gray to not not to trust. Oh, your, yeah. So this cabin we're in, um, is there only one way in and out? Yeah, most of the cabins just have one front door. There are windows though. It it wouldn't be too hard to get into any of the cabins. They they don't really have locks on them. Um the cabins that you are in the counselor cabins have like a bolt lock on the inside. That's what you've noticed. The counselor ones or camper ones, excuse me, have a, a lock that could be locked on the outside. Like at night when they, when it's lights out, gets locked up by a counselor. So it's, it's, it's getting dark now or is it getting? Yeah. It's the sun is setting over the lake and it's a, peaceful evening to be honest with you um i'm gonna yeah. suggest that maybe we go look for bill and brenda i don't i mean with bear you know we ran into a bear earlier today i would hate for them to be caught at night Ned, in the dark Ned says well look i don't know how to say this easily marcy but bill and brenda are probably occupied somewhere all right they're goofing off all right, so we just got to pull ourselves together and work through this. All right, we're eating I'll dinner. Let's on, just. I'll, I'll chuckle and say, "Yeah, you probably won't be seeing them until tomorrow morning." Yeah, and Marcy looks like she's at the verge of tears, and she just sulks in the corner eating her meatloaf. I'm gonna hand her. Oh, I'm gonna. Can I? Do you, I'm gonna, can I cast find familiar, maybe like a cat or something, or a, a cute animal that I could then kind of have her scurry over to her? Sure. Um, what do you want to What do you want to summon? Um, let me look up what the. Are you doing as a ritual? Ten minutes. Yeah, I guess so. I'm gonna try to like console her, make her feel better uh, while I'm doing this. Maybe a. Um. Oh man, I'm looking at the. I guess a cat is the cutest thing on the list here. <laughs> but it could sure, be. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to summon a rat? No. I'm like looking at these things. There's like rat, poisonous <laughs> snake, an octopus, a lizard. I was like, no, I think a, a seahorse could be cool, but I don't want it to die. <laughs> but... <laughs> so Probably you. Octopus. Yeah, exactly. Lots of tentacle <laughs> hugs. Yeah. So you, you eat your dinner. You comfort Marcy just a bit, but the more she lingers on this thought, the more she gets distraught about her and Bill and her relationship. At the end of the night, everybody's done eating, and Alice says, you know, I feel like Bill and Brenda would have been here by now, don't you think? And Ned says, I mean, I, I, it's not like them to miss dinner, but, you know, hey, what can we do? Alice says, I don't know. He said he he was going to meet us a half hour after we saw him, and that was like hours ago. Yeah, it's unlike Bill to, I mean, he's a jokester, all right, but it's unlike him to not do his work. Uh, We we, we, we should, you want to go trace those steps? Maybe maybe something happened. Yeah, it's dark out, though. We should take some lanterns. Oh, I'm I'm good with the dark. I can see in the dark, so. Well, I can't, Alice says. Okay. Or I have light, and I'll cast light on, you know, various objects that they might be carrying that might help. Ned Ned says, listen, everybody, look, I, I'm i okay with going to check one of the cabins, but we shouldn't really be going around at night. Steve's not here, and to be honest with you, there was a bear sighting today. We should probably be 
Real careful, right, Yen? Yen, wouldn't you agree? Sure. And then I, I'm going to cast Message as a cantrip. And I'm just going to, like, whisper into the ears of, of who? Wait, who was going to go? Scrappy? Scrappy, yes. Scrappy. And I'm going to whisper, just sneak out. I'll keep them distracted. And I <laughs> I don't really know where that noise and I'll just be like, <laughs> Roger that. <laughs> Steve says or Ned says, Good. Thank you for listening. I um, um I should have you... tanked my intelligence for this character. And I didn't. I don't I'm not like a tanking person, yeah. but I really should have. Um <laughs> Well um, you know yeah. look. If you're going to go check places, like I said, check the cabins, but that's it. Because like I said, I don't want you running around the camp at night with the bears out there. Alice says, we should probably all go looking for them, though. What if they're hurt? What if they're injured? What if the bear attacked them and they're left for dead out there? At and this then, point, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to say, well, if you all excuse me, nature calls and I'll walk out the front door. Okay, so you head out. Sure, you head out. And Ned says, all right, all right, let's everybody calm down. Marcy's starting to get upset. She's like, I hope Bill's okay. Or And then next sentence, she's like, but I'm going to kill him when I see him. And then you've got Jack. Jack's like, yeah, we could go looking for him. Yeah, we should. We should help him. And Ned says, all right, all right, all right. Listen, listen. If we want to do this, we can. But we're not going alone. Jack says, we should split up. We could cover more ground. And Ned says, well, nobody's going by themselves. Everyone has a partner. You understand? All right. Yeah, Ned. Uh, who? Uh, Lothar, why don't you come with me? No, I'm, I'm with Bill. Sorry, oh. buddy. Bill, well, Bill's not here. We're looking for Bill. You're oh, with Jack? Yeah. Uh, you're with Jack? Jack. Yeah, sorry. Uh, all right. Well, uh, Scrappy, I assume you're with... Alice? Yeah, she's my buddy. We're besties now. All right, Zuzu, you should come little, with me. We made glitter hearts and everything. Oh, that's, that's I nice. Can't, okay. I can't leave Marcy in this state by herself. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, anybody else? Y Yen, I guess you want to uh, stay here. I'll, I'll go look. Dad, it's, it's not safe for you to go alone. You'll need protection. I have... I have experience protecting people in woods like this. I'll help you. Let's go together. All right. Uh, all right, look, everybody. We go and we search for an hour. Why don't uh, Scrappy and Alex, Alice, as well as uh, Lothar and Jack, why don't you head up north? And uh, Zuzu, Marcy, you head south. And Yen and I will head south as well. We'll just go different directions. We'll go to the west and the east and meet back in the middle. All right? So we'll split up. And again, an hour. That's it. Okay? All right. Let's go. It's, get, it's, it's dark now, so get lanterns. So each of you have a lantern among the pair. And then he says, hey, where did your friend go? The little halfling. It usually like, uh, out, takes a while going to the bathroom. Oh, okay. As soon as I stepped out, I started stealthily, quietly sneaking down towards Steve's cabin. Gotcha. Okay. So you head to Steve's. We'll, we'll do this in parts here. I'm actually going to. <clears throat> actually, what might be better is if we did a north and south group. So maybe Scrappy and Lothar, you head north with Jack and Alice. Zuzu, Yen, you head south with. Ned and uh, Marcy. That might be better. Keep it as a, a groups. And then obviously we got Gray, Gray Dougal going on his own here. All right, Gray. You head to the cabin, Steve's cabin, uh, which is down here. All right. Move your token where's there. My, where's my guy? Is that it? That's him, right? Yeah. Yeah. Should enlarge this screen. Okay, I'm trying to go through the woods to be as quiet and, you know, blend in so nobody can see me. 
Yeah, so there's nobody around, so you can you can make a stealth when, check if you'd like. If I don't see anybody around, no, it's okay. Once okay. I get to this clearing, I'm just going to sprint down sure. to like this, the back of this cabin and try to go around the side here to the front. Sure. And is the are the lights on in the cabin? Nope, nope, everything's shut. Yep, there's a padlock. Look, okay, I'm going to take out my thieves tools and start trying to um, pick the lock. Go for it. So is that an ability check? Yep, it would be thieves tools. Yep, so dexterity. Or if you program, I think you programmed it in, you just click on thieves tools in your character sheet. Okay, yeah, let me open it up here. It also says because his abilities, um, if he rolls a, a one, he gets to re-roll it again on a ability score. Okay. Or an ability, rather. Oh, yeah, halfling lucky, yeah. Yeah, the lucky thing. Go for it. I can just click on thieves tools or... Yep, it should work. Okay. And, oh, oh, it looks like an 18. Ooh-ah. But All it right. says four. What's that? What happened? What? It looks like an 18 on the die, and it says... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so... We just can't trust the the dice always. You always trust the, the the chat. But you rolled an eighteen for something else before, didn't you? Um, I don't remember actually. Some oh, prior yeah. to this must have been must have been an eighteen, because I see an eighteen there. But then I think it's just you rolled an eighteen before, and then your thieves tools was a four. So you're trying to pick this lock, but man, Steve's got a he's got a tough one here. You wonder what he's keeping hiding in this house. Um, can I try another one? Sure. Um, no, it's going to take you some time. This takes about, you know, you're not doing this in, in like a quick moment here. So it's going to take you some time to do this. You feel like, though, you're better off trying to well, it says, break it. It says, my, it says my name here, rolling D20, 18, 18. And then it says four thieves tools. I don't, I don't get yeah, that. Yeah, the 18 looks like it was from a different roll. The four, the what's in the? Yeah, two, eight, well, there are two eighteens up there. Yeah, you rolled that earlier. Yeah, I see the eighteen. Oh. Yeah. You rolled. I know. So why did, you why did I just do that then? So the the dice, the virtual dice. This has happened sometimes. It just looks like oh, it rolls, and it looks like a die roll, but then the chat tells you what the total actually was. This the virtual dice is, is just a. This chat is halfling phobic. Yeah. <laughs> So, you can't get in through thieves' tools, but you did count. There were quite a few windows around here before. Yeah. Try one of the windows on the side. Sure. None of the windows seem like they're open, but nobody's around. You could very easily break this with your dagger, the hit, the pommel of your can dagger. I open and, can I pry it open instead? Sure. Do you have a crowbar? I, what about my dagger? Uh, you probably could, like, yeah, like... Kind of. I mean, I have thieves tools. Would a, would a crowbar be within thieves tools? No, or? it would be part of like a pack. But still, yeah, I'd say yeah. you can use your dagger to like break uh, what the latch or something to get in. Yeah, I'll try that. So you you hop in through one of the side windows, and now you're in so Steve's. I'll put the mic right yeah. here, so it's like the side that they nobody can see me from this area. Right. And like the two having fun here, they could see me, but I'm not worried about that. Gotcha. It is pretty dark out. Okay, so oh, I'll try like, you know. It's super dark out. Yeah, the moonlight is the only thing you see here. So the doors are locked. Do I see anything around me with my, um, with, uh, we have infravision, right? Or is that not a thing? No, you have, okay. you, you actually don't phone. have dark vision. Halflings don't have dark vision. Oh, okay. All right. Do I hear anything walking around me or any type of noises at, at a place? Nope. You don't hear a thing. No. Uh, it's quiet in here. There is a... My... Sorry, go ahead. I'll continue with my work then. Yeah, so you're looking around, right? You're trying to search this room. You can see that it's... Uh, the main room that's in this cabin looks like it's mm -hmm. some sort of like a living space. There seems to be an office as well. Uh, and the two areas... You kind of just do a quick... There? What's that? Did I get in? Oh, yeah, you're in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. So, you yeah, I'll just... The... Um, I'll sneak yeah, I'm gonna... around and... Yeah, oh yeah, you can you can you can absolutely sneak if you want to. Uh, but there's nobody here, so you 
go through the darkness. Only light mm-hmm. is moonlight from out through the window. Um, so it's kind of hard to see, but the general features of this area would be that there's lots of bookshelves in the main mm-hmm. living space, and as well as the office. There's the typical furnishings, sofa, bed, things like that, as well as a pile of wood for the uh, wood-burning stove that would, would normally heat this place. In the office, you can see a bunch of paperwork, um, right. files and things like that on a desk. And there's lantern in here as well that could be turned on. You know, I'm going to put... Can I, can I turn on the lantern as low as it can go and like just put it on the floor? Yeah, you could do that so it's less obvious. Yeah. yeah. Um, are the desk drawers open or are they locked? Uh, they are open. It seems like there's okay. most of it things in there are personal belongings, things that don't really stick stick out to you as being important. However, well, when you say per, I mean, are any of them? Do they um, seem to be worth anything? No, little trinkets, things like that. You haven't found gold or anything like that. All right. What you do see though is under the desk is a heavy crossbow, and it looks like it is loaded. Hmm. Maybe he doesn't trust people. And maybe he's afraid out here. Yeah. I mean, possibly. I can't lift it up. It's too heavy. For, too heavy for me. All right, I won't touch it. Um, can I read these papers if I put them on the ground by where the lantern is? Yeah. Most of them are inventory, receipts, paperwork for the ca- for the camp. Nothing seems out of order. Doesn't even look like it's a lot of money. Uh, although, as you're on the floor, you notice that there's a bump underneath the rug. It's small, but there's a bump there. That was my yeah. That was my next thing. I was gonna look for secret entrances or doors or. So I'll lift pull, up the um the rug. You pull back the rug and you can see that there is a entrance to a cellar. Ah, is it locked? It is. There is a there is a latch with a padlock. That's the bump that you had felt under the rug. Can I try to pick it? Yeah. Give me another thieves check. Ugh. Well, if you spend good. some time, you can bludgeon it open, but it would be loud. Could I dig around it with my dagger? Is the wood, like, strong, or is it, you know, a little rotted, or... The... Yeah, you probably could. Yeah, you could could wear away at the wood. Sure. Yeah, let me try that. All right, so you're able to ply, pry back some of the wood and break it open, find enough of an entrance for you. It's going to take some time, though. It'll take you, like, okay. a few minutes. Um, yeah. But after I'll you do, do that... as quietly as I can, too. Sure, obviously, you can do this quiet, but I don't think you could do this without... If somebody were around the cabin, they'd probably hear it. Yeah, well, every now and then I'll, like, kind of stick my head up and look out the window to see if I see any torchlights or lanterns okay. coming from sure. where we were. Sure. So, you look around, uh, you don't see anybody, and you can make an entrance big enough to head in. What do you do? Head in. Take the lantern right. with me. Leave the entrance open. Down here, you see a small, tiny shelf. It's got some, looks like some more valuable items here. There is also gold. You see Mm -hmm. about 500 gold pieces worth of various coins. This could be the money, right, where the seller, in the seller. Yeah. And you also see on the shelf, so a bit stranger things. You see, like, a black cloak. You see a mask. You see some weapons. Ones that look like they have been used recently. There is actually blood stained all over some of them. Machete, hatchet, saw, all hanging on the shelf. How big is the room that I'm in? It's small. It's like 10 by 10. I'm going to do a quick quick, um, sweep around with my lantern. Am I alone down here? You are alone. However, you do see one single solitary book on its own shelf. All right. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is pocket all the gold. You probably wouldn't be able to pocket all. It's too much to take. Are there gold pieces? There are some gold pieces. pieces. Yeah, you you could take a bunch of handfuls of it. Yeah. Yeah, if there's, I'll, I'll pick out the gold and I'll take as much as I can carry. 
Gotcha. What else do you do? Um, let me go and look at this book. You take the book up. It doesn't look like it's old or, or it's old, but it's not. It doesn't look like it's got dust on it or anything like that. Well, what's it's it, been. What's it made out of? It's leather bound. Okay. And on the spine, it's titled "The Thing That Should Not Be." Huh? Does that mean anything to me? No, wouldn't mean wouldn't mean anything to you. What's what is the cover made out of? Uh, leather. Is there an image on it? No image. Nope. But if a quick thumb through of it, you could see various pictures and notes in the margins. The book looks like it has strange images of hard to even say what this technology is. Looks like some sort of boat, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Is there any, What's your pa was there any passive writing? perception? What's your passive perception? Um, a second. What's your uh, wisdom? Uh, it's 11. An 11? Yes. Okay. All right, so you have the lantern with you, right? Yeah, I put it on the floor. The lantern is on the floor. So as you're reading the book, looking through the pictures, trying to find, you don't see anything in, in language that you what understand. Was the book on like a pedestal, you said, or a table, or...? It was on a shelf, and you don't see anything in the book that you can comprehend. Like, the languages that are inside the book, some of the notes, are in a language you've never seen before. Is it thick? It's it's a decent-sized tome, yeah. I would say it's not the biggest book, but uh, but it's definitely over 100 pages. What's your uh, armor class? Um... Thirteen. Thirteen. Steve. Dougal's reading this book. And you don't hear a thing until a machete is stabbed oh. straight through your chest. You take... <laughs> how much HP do you have? Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Thirteen hit points. Thirteen? A hulking hand reaches out to you. It's 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 hard to tell exactly what color it is in the dark as as the machete goes through you. The oh. lantern also gets knocked out. But this hand, it's massive. It covers your entire face. And you just are squeezed with this crushing hug. You're going to take this much damage, Steve. Let me go back then. It's going to be like 18 V10s. <laughs> <laughs> machete through the chest my goodness you take 46 damage oh. <laughs> he is beyond dead <laughs> he is done <laughs> the last Looks thing like you see <laughs> as you slump to the floor your your body is just lifeless before you, before you lose consciousness, you just see some hulking creature over you. It's humanoid in, in a way. You can't see any part of the face as it's cloaked and the light just went out. But from what light spills in from up top above, above uh, the opening of the cellar, you do see this creature. It must be eight feet tall. And it takes its machete and the last thing you see is it starts to open you up from your neck <laughs> all the way down to your groin. And that's the last thing you see as Grey Dougal is dead. <laughs> he never got his mold wine. <laughs> he got his guts spread all over the floor, though. <laughs> all right, that's so awesome. Yen and, and uh, Zuzu, you're so headed south. <laughs> Um, Your head guy just wanted, he just wanted some mutton. Wow. Some mutton. All right. He's got something something mutton going on. <laughs> so you head south. 
out of the cabin. You follow along the trail that you would expect to to follow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, basically towards the main cabins. So you're going to split maybe there. Um, okay. Move your tokens down. I'll move Marcy and Ned. And as you're walking by, you see there's a, a Steve's cabin door is wide open. And Ned says, hey, your friend, where'd he go? Shouldn't be in Steve's cabin. You're right. He shouldn't be in there. Yeah. That's... I'm sure it's not him. Well, we got to lock this thing else. up. Hey, Gray, get out of here. You see Ned go, uh, Ned go up inside. He takes his lantern in. And you just hear from... You're standing outside, right, I assume? Yeah. You just Wait, hear... Gonna, uh, hold on, did I go down too? I forgot. Did Marcy stay north? Yep. No, no. Marcy's going south okay, as well. Okay. I, was, I didn't realize. Okay. Yep. So Zuzu and Yen. You and Marcy are standing outside, and you hear Ned yell from inside, Oh my god! Come in here, quick! Your friend! He's dying! He, he, he's dead! I'm gonna... Rush inside. Yeah, we're gonna run in. I'm gonna tell Marcy to stay, stay close. So you see inside the image that we just described, you see a, a cellar door open, a broken lantern, and your friend's body, Grey Dougal, lying on the floor. He looks as though he's been dissected. All of his insides, all of his organs, his stomach, intestines, have actually been laid out next to him. He's open wide, legs and arms spread, his midsection splayed open, and all of the body parts are organized on the sides of the body. I check to see if any organs are missing. Like no organs are missing. Nope. Um. All right. Let's Maybe. see what I have here. Can I do an Arcana check to see if there are any like residues of? magical influence. You'd have to detect here. magic, but no, oh. the arcana wouldn't help you here. Although you do see a book lying on the floor right next to his outstretched hand. I do have detect magic. Can I cast that? Sure. Let's see if anything pops up. You don't. You don't see anything magical, oh, no. What? Nothing in this room emanates an aura. Okay. Look, Zuzu. He has a book. Do you think that has anything to do with this? Could be, but if it is, I don't want to end up like him. But how can a book hurt a person? It doesn't make sense. I'll walk you over hear? to the book. You hear that, kids? Don't read. Right. <laughs> <laughs> can I um, ready an action? Like a, a firebolt or something. Sure. Just in case. Marcy is crying. She's standing at top of the cellar, uh, at the cellar door, and she, Ned is comforting her. And he says, "What kind of madman does this?" Somebody who's been very, very hurt. Marcy says, "Maybe it was a maybe it was a bear. Maybe a bear got in." I don't think a bear could do a bear can do damage, but I don't think it could line up all the organs like this. Um, this is the work uh, of a skilled hand. I feel like we should alert the other people. Um, I don't want us. Is, is there an upstairs in this? house or is and upstairs no it's you've just seen the, the whole, cellar you've seen it's the entirety a... yeah and we don't and we uh, I don't know if we want to go into the cellar again without alerting everyone else mm. it's up to you 
Oh, wait, are we not? I thought we were in the cellar. Are we I not think he's saying cellar? he, like, got back out then. But... Oh, yeah, I mean, it's... Yen, you could still be down there. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at the book. It's, uh, again, titled The Things That Should Not Be. And inside, you see descriptions of some sort of technology, perhaps skimming through it. Give me an investigation check. I can see what you can glean from this. Can I have my familiar, while well, she's doing this, go out and find the other people sure. to, to tell them? Yeah, absolutely. So the cat? Yeah, the cat. Okay. All right, Yen, what'd you get? Seven. Seven. Like I said, rudimentary drawings, they're not really something you can comprehend. The language you don't speak, I believe. What languages do you speak? Uh, common, Elvish, Abyssal. None of those. And so you, you don't really know what to make out of this. Can't make heads or tails here, but it does look like some sort of a like I said, a ship, a boat, perhaps. Um, mm -hmm. Some different, maybe, weapons in here, but you're not even sure what they are. There's really nothing to to get from this now without investigating it over time and looking at it over time. Spending I'll, some more, you know. Okay, so I look around and I see, like, clearly the cellar has been compromised. Um, and Steve, whenever he comes back, he will know that people have been here. So whatever, like... There's no fooling him at this point. So I take the book and Good, I tuck it. Yeah, I yep. tuck it into a pocket. Good. So again, at a quick glance, you read through it. There are some words, by the way, I maybe didn't make this clear with when I announced it to Gray, but there are other words in the book. Like the, the I was talking about the writing. That's like the notes that are scribbled in. That is in a language that you don't understand. The book is, well, written in a way that there's common, but for the most of part, the things that are drawn in or written in that you don't understand. You can read the book further a little later. All right. I did want to ask before I got butchered. Um, the ink, was it written in different colors or was it written just in black or is there any red in there? Or? Mostly. No, black, black, black. Okay. So, all right. So you, uh, let's switch over to the other group. Where are you crew? Where are you headed? Um, Alice, and Jack and Lothar I would think that we'd be heading to the last place we saw Bill and Brenda, which would be the first cabin. The student, uh, the the uh, camper cabins. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. All right, move yourselves to to where you'd like to be. Okay, guys, guys. So last time that Alice and I saw them, we were in this first cabin right here, and I opened up the door and I said, "Hello, Bill." And and then yeah, he said, "Give him." 10 minutes and then and then half an hour and it's been longer than that and so let's try and i'm gonna try the door the door's open as it was earlier and you see a whole mess of uh what you see is pretty terrifying the bunk that you saw bill and kind of leaning over before mm -hmm. looks like all the bed sheets have been like torn off um but you also notice that they're stained red. Okay. Uh, yeah, so these are definitely not red last time. So we do you can kind of- Do you want to go into the cabin? I don't know. I mean, uh, mm, can I do a perception check outside the cabin first before I go sure. inside? Because I want to see ahead. if it's safer inside or outside. Like, I'm ahead. totally- um, sorry about that. 20. Ooh, 20. You don't hear or see anything in the cabin from the door frame. You take a look around your surroundings. You don't see or hear anything, but you do notice something very brief, sort of a flashing light uh, over by the dock. Okay. Um... And we probably have a view of the dock from inside the cabin. Are there like windows or something? So yeah. Maybe... Um, okay. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to be like, guys, I saw something by the dock. So I don't think it's our guys. I think maybe we should go into the cabin. I know it's real gross, but maybe we could see through the windows. What's going on? Did you see a person? I, I just saw a flashing light. 
But I'm oh, going to be honest, my eyesight's real bad, guys. So, and they Wait don't need glasses to fit my face. I also saw a light at the lake earlier, but I thought it was just my imagination as well. Hmm. Um, so I'm going to go inside. I'll be like, Bill, Brenda, you still in here? Sure, you go inside. You, you say, you know, where everybody is. You ask for somebody. You head over to the bed. And as you turn the corner to see what's on the other side of the bed, you are grossed. I would say gross. You you could decide how you you react, but oh, I do want to say shocked. when we walk in, I close the door though, uh, to the outside. I don't know oh, if that so makes you, any difference, but oh, okay. Where are Lothar then? Outside? Yeah, I didn't come in. Okay, Lothar outside. So oh, I'm sorry. Do you want me to close the door, Lothar? No, it's cool. You just close the door in my face. No, no. <laughs> no I, I'm sorry. Are we coming in with us? You staying outside? I'll no, leave I think the door he's staying. Open if, he's, staying he's staying outside. outside well, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of intrigued about the whole light thing, so I'm like looking over to see if I could see it again. Okay, sure. I'll leave the door open then since he's still outside. I'm not being rude. <laughs> sure. So, Lothar, you're outside and you just... Well, actually, sorry. Let me go back. I didn't explain everything in there. So, Steph, you, you uh, turn the corner and you see just piles of, of body and organs, both Brenda and Bill, disemboweled, again, neatly arranged to the side of them, and pools of blood surrounding them. Um, I'm going to pat Alice on the shoulder. I assume she came in with me. I don't know if we're fully in pairs or not. Alice, um, Alice didn't want to go in for fear of what she might see. Oh, so they're that's fair. both Alice and Jack are hanging with Lothar outside. Okay, then it's just me then. Um, I'm going to do an investigation check to see if I could see what what's in here. And do I hear anything inside either? Sure. Why don't you give me a perception check um, oh. while you do that? Lothar, I believe you hear something coming from the bushes over here. To my right. To your right, correct. I found it the cabin, yeah. to, it's to um, the left on the map, but to the right, your right. Quickly yeah. look over to see what I can spot. I with, believe I have dark vision. Right? Without having to make a check, you can see that there's a figure, humanoid figure, walking through the bushes about 150 feet away from you. Oh, I You can see through out. the moonlight. It's moonlight, so you can see, and you've, you know, your lantern. Do I recognize them? No. No, too far away to make out description. So I yell out to the group. Or I look around and make sure we're all here and say, there's someone over there. Who are you? Uh, Steve. Yognir is going through the bushes of this campgrounds. You and the Supernatural 20 crew were summoned here uh, because... Some people around the town of this campgrounds have gone missing. It seems that there could be some sort of supernatural element to this as well. Um, because there was some sort of a urban myth or legend many years ago about a kid who perhaps might have died. But there was more to the story than, than meets the eye. So the supernatural crew is just, it's a, you don't anticipate finding anything. It's been since you've been to... Barovia, most of your supernatural casework load has been light. You know, a ghost in the attic ends up being a sheet blowing in the wind, that sort of thing. Uh, but you know what? Your guild has sent you here, and you're you're going to investigate. Over the course of the last day or so, you and the group got separated. The wilderness was pretty... Uh, it was got foggy, and in fact, the fog is picking up quite a bit. And you feel like you had these memories of Barovia. You're hoping that you can find your group again. You think you found the campsite, though. You wandered in and found one of the signs that said Camp Clearwater. So you're hoping to find some people. And I believe you found some. You see three individuals out by the edge of the lake. So it's just me or the whole Supernatural 20 crew? You got separated, but you're, you know that you're all okay. headed here. So Right. I'll hail them. Say hello. Uh, Lothar. Oh, I have my hammer out. You see a tiefling. This traveler. You see a tiefling. 
in the edges now, coming closer to you. I'd say you are you were by the water, weren't you? Uh, I was by the cabin looking into the water. Yeah. So let's, so let's just move our tokens just a tiny bit so that you can get a little closer to the water. And Steve, I'll bring your token in. Okay. Yagnir. Uh, Lothar, you can you can go and chat with him. Who are you? Why are you here? Oh, my name is Yagnir. Um, I was sent here by my guild, and I'm waiting for my friends. Who, who might you be? I'm Lothar. I work here. You're trespassing. What is this place? Well, why don't you tell me about why you're here first, since you're the one trespassing? Well, my guild sent my friends and I here to investigate this area. We hear there might, we're, we're what you might call um, supernatural specialists. We assist people with their, who might be undergoing some sort of uh, haunting or other Wait, supernatural do, occurrences. Do I know about what happened in the cabin? Or is that just um, a no, scrappy you, thing? You do not know. Uh, um, so that's supernatural here, friend. The only thing supernatural here is you, you funny looking person. <laughs> I'm a cleric. Cleric? Last time I checked, clerics don't have horns. I'm a tiefling. Most of my kind have horns. I have you ever seen one of my kind? I puff my chest out. I have I'm never sure seen I'm it, sure. but I say, of course I've seen your kind. I'm an experienced adventurer. Actually, if Very my experienced. My, if my appearance distresses you, I'll put my cloak back over my head. So you can only see my two red eyes sticking out. You know, oh, shiny. that's yeah. Jack much says, better. Jack says, yeah, that's probably best. Alice says, well, look, I I'm getting kind of freaked out. If there's a supernatural thing going on here, I, I just want to go back home. You all to appear to be very young. Can you take me to an adult? Uh, my well, chest out again. Yeah, you're an adult, well, right, Lothar? You're pretty old. What do you mean? I'm 30. Well, who's in charge here, may I ask? Steve. Is Steve here? Jack says, no, Steve went into town. Well, if you don't mind, I think I'll wait for him. Could you show me to your office or yeah we could gather yeah let's get going alice says I i'm getting a little freaked out out here let's just get scrappy and go so we're going to jump back to scrappy scrappy yeah, if i um if i was the only one in the cabin i would have saw this and tried to like yell out to the other guys 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 and like try to run away sure so you you look you see the horror before you organs displayed you you think quickly and you say i got to tell people you guys guys you turn around and you look directly up standing in front of you eight feet tall is a cloaked figure massive hulking arms with weird sickly purple hands and it reaches out to grab you give me a what's your armor class um oh my armor class is a 13 okay 13 so it grabs you and it brings you close to it and you feel its arms wrapping around you tightly, constricting you. You can try to I, call out. Okay, so as a kobold, I can grovel, cower, and beg for my life to distract them and get away. So, <laughs> can I try that? Yes, you I can mean, try. I can Go ahead. Um. So remember, oh, you're doesn't... being you're being grabbed tight, so you it'll be hard to speak. But go ahead. Right. Um. Actually, it just distracts foes until, t so my allies gain an advantage. So now, but never mind, just help me. I still, role-playing wise, <laughs> you can still grovel. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, uh, no, 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 don't, you don't have to squeeze me. It's fine, man. Like, we're cool. We're cool. You know, you, you're like, you're huh? like a bad guy. I'm scrappy too. And, uh, these meddling monsters. Before you can finish your groveling and cowering, you feel your vertebrae snap as you take 37 bludgeoning damage. Well, that'll definitely kill me. 
You die instantly, and your body is dropped to the floor. Again, the machete comes out to dissect you. All right, so Yagnir and uh, Lothar. Jack says, "Yeah, let's just let's just go grab Scrappy and and head back. This is it's getting a little free. I'm getting a little freaked out too. I know Alice. Alice was quick to get scared, but I I I'm getting freaked out too. Let's let's just head back. This doesn't seem like it's a good night to go searching through the woods. Scrappy, you think you're safe with me, I'll say. Scrappy." Jack looks to Lothar. Scrappy? Are you just with her? With him? But, yeah, Scrappy went in into the building. Scrappy, you here? Jack goes up Are to the door. The, we buy the building? You're about 100... Well, you're about probably maybe 200 <clears throat> feet away when you get close to talk to everybody. But yeah. Well, I'll start walking towards the building. Sure. Lothar, you see Yagnir headed towards... Towards hey, 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 where, where do you think you're going? I'm going to find your friends. You stay here. We'll find them. Oh, you come with me. No, Let's no, all no. go you, together, Alice says. I don't want to be by us. myself. Well, come with me. Yeah, let's 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 all stay. stick together. Hmm. You open the door, and you see your friend, the kobold's body, splayed out. This time, the organ's much smaller. Still arranged neatly to the side. I let out a little uh, squeak, but I hold it in as to not show my fear to this newcomer demon person. (laughs) Yagnir, you see something, unfortunately, that you're all too familiar with. A dead Mm. body. I'll cast light on something in this room, something like a piece of furniture or something. Sure, you cast it on like a, like a chandelier or something, and it illuminates yeah. the room. Unfortunately, now you're able to see even further into the room, and you see the bodies of Brenda and Bill also just splayed out open for everybody to see. All right, I'll, I'll look around. The stench is horrible in this room? room. The stench is the stench. really pungent. How big is this room? It's a cabin for campers so you might have maybe 20 20 kids in this cabin it's a big it's big all right i'll go i'm not ignoring the bodies but i'm just going to walk to the back to see if there's a back door or there is a back door to yeah there is a back door that would lead to where the campfires would be set up at night and you can see that it doesn't look like the campfires have been used in quite some time but the back door had a lock on it and Mm -hmm. it was broken do i see footprints Give me a survival check. Survival. And Lothar, if you would like to do the same, you could both give it to me. We'll take the higher result. Survival? Yep. A four. Mm. Yagnir? It's probably like like an 11 or something. No, unfortunately, no. You don't see any footprints or signs of blood. Almost like whatever killed them disappeared. Hmm. I'll go back to the bodies. Jack and Alice are really sad. Jack is bawling tears. Alice is comforting him. We should head back. We should go back with the others. We shouldn't be out here. Uh, Let me go investigate these bodies. Sure, you can look at them. After investigating, give me a medicine check. That would be uh, 18. While the instrument that was used was crude, it looks like it was a delicately done um, incision Mm -hmm. to prevent injuring the organs, damaging the organs. And you said the organs on on the kobold's body are placed on the side? Both all the bodies are neatly organized and placed as if they were in the body, just to the side. So it's like in their proper places. 
Did I have I ever seen anything like this before? No. Hmm. I so mean, you know, so you would probably know people are people do crazy things. I mean, right. this is a murderer. Maybe they have some sort of this is their their shtick. Their their ammo. They get yeah. off on this. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, the organs are not placed in in an or, in a type of position where it might be like a symbol or something. No, it looks like they are arranged as they are in a body. In the body. All right. Well, I'll give them all the last rites and. Um, Sure. Hopefully my friends show up soon. Sure. Okay, you right. and and I'll come out what, ritual, ask, what ritual I'll come are you doing ask, to them? Yeah, I'll say, calm down. Say, where are your friends? <laughs> you tell us. You just got here and now our friends are dead. Well, how many of you were there? You would know. Aren't you hunting us? I'm not hunting you. I told you I came here to help. I was sent here. Hmm. Listen, Both kid, are... stop this foolishness and you gotta help me or, or else I can't help you. So tell I... me how many of you are there here. Puff my chest out. Who are you calling, kid? Uh, Alright, who else is there? Who can I talk to? <laughs> Mar Alice says, well, there's Marcy. There was Brenda and Bill. Okay. Now we got, it's just Ned and, and Jack here. Marcy, me. And then your friends, Lothar, and she spouts out Zuzu, Yen, and uh, Gray. Gray? Gray, the halfling. Where is, where is this Gray? I don't know, but can we go back to the main cabin? I don't, I don't want to be here anymore. That was my next question. Where are you staying? So let's, let's go back to this main cabin. Let's go. We'll go because I say we go. I think we should go. Okay. I'll let him have his... His moment? I understand this young man is freaking out. I'll let him have his freak out. I'll um, put my arm around him as we walk, and I'll try to, like, you know, explain the blessings of, um... of all good things from my religion, and uh, try to calm him down. Good. Good, good, good. Yen and Zuzu... You head out of Steve's cabin, and you're headed towards the group, correct? Yep. Okay. With Marcy so you head out, <clears throat> and you see a figure waiting out by the dock. It's a half-orc. Steph, would you like to describe your character? Um, yeah. Uh, he looks more human than orc. Um, decently tall, so six foot five. And pretty large with runes drawn on various parts of him so um nothing crazy to script just just chilling yeah and do i think oh sorry. sorry i was gonna say yeah and uh, ned says everybody stay back and he puts a hand over over yen's kind of like in front of you to protect you as if he could do i see do i see steph no you don't see anybody yet um okay Ned puts his hand over you and he says, Hey, you there. This is private property. I don't know what sick, twisted thing you're trying to do here, but all right, there's more of us than you. We'll kill you if we have to. Okay, man, you can try. <laughs> he, he takes out, he puts up his, his fists, his dukes. Ah. We got we got a fighting one here. I'll, hey. I'll handle this, Yen. Hey. I'll handle it. Huh. Okay. Look, I got separated from most of my group here. We we came over to look because we were told something funky is going on. I don't. You guys, you guys are all dressed the same, like some weird cult. So I think uh, I don't think it's you guys I'm looking for. Yeah, that kind of say. How do we know you're not the one who murdered our friend? Yeah, that doesn't sound like me, man. I mean... Well, you're, you're the only other person who could... Like, there was no one else here. I'm and the then you just magically appear. I'm the only other person around. That we know of that could potentially have killed us. Yeah. Killed one of us. You did Marcy show says, up look... Very, you did show up very conveniently right after a murder, you know? And he's got a uh, big sword. What do you have? What weapon do you have? 
I've got a mo- uh, long sword and morning star. I've got a, a couple of hand axes. <laughs> like I'm pretty. <laughs> and look, <laughs> I'm, that I'm look been very the... suspicious right now. Like I get it. Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> that could have been the weapon that cut open Gray, says Marcy. Nah, man. Like, look, cutting people open. That that means that there is blood involved. Do I look bloody? No. Do I look wet? No. Like, not me. You'd be my next question. of like, you could have just washed it off at the lake. But it's... Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but sounds like what killed your friend is what I'm looking for. So can I help you? Ned looks to all of you and he says, I don't know. Should we trust trust him? I don't think we have a choice here. We're trying to get back with our friends. Maybe we'll find your friends too. Yeah, Maybe. that sounds like. Oh. Uh, Continue, lady. You're good. Uh, you can come along, but maybe keep a distance for now. No problem. I'll I'll take up the rear. Make sure nothing attacks you from behind. Thank you. All right. Well, if you all say so, but I'm keeping my eye on you. All right. Oh, I'm keeping my eye on you, killer. I, I, I see, mean, I see those fists. I got a mean right hook. <laughs> All right, so you head head back towards um, <clears throat> your cabin, which is here. Um, and uh, move your tokens. You'll get to that spot. Yeah. Oh, we're going to these cabins down here. No, no your where... cabin, the one you're staying at. Oh. <laughs> so yes, you see yeah. the other group returning at the same time. Different people in each. Yagnir, you see Bork. Uh, sorry, I said Bork. Your name's Brock, right? Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember how I said I was going to change that overlay? Yep. Hey, Bork. <laughs> yep. What kind of name is that? Oh, it's I'll raise my hands. <laughs> no, I'll raise my hands like Brock over here. What's up, Yagnir? Good to find you finally. Something strange is going on around here. Murders. Yeah, that's what these guys are saying. Looks like they cut them up like a bunch of science experiments. Did this my, I mean, did I think that the murders were just were actually in, in any way ritualistic or just um just like somebody getting off in a really disgusting manner? You really don't know. I mean, you can make an insight check. I could maybe okay. give you leaning in one direction or the other. Uh, that would be 20. Not natural 20. You don't think it's part of a ritual, but you're not sure okay. what the what the true purpose would be. It doesn't seem to have the same feel as a ritual. I'll ask Brock. Well, I'll tell Brock what I saw. and I'll ask, What did you see? Uh, I didn't. I didn't see anything in particular. I just heard what these guys said, but it sounds very similar. Over it, this guy three Steve's bodies cabin. that were three bodies that were eviscerated, and the organs are placed next to them in the same manner that they would be in the bodies. I found two. I found a cobalt, which is strange. What would a cobalt be doing out here? But then I also found a young young man and a young woman. Oh, okay. Um, these guys found the half lane, a half lane like that in a basement. Huh. Uh, can somebody tell me what is going on? Ned demands. Who are you all? Well, what was it? I forgot. What was the name, the name we gave ourselves? Um, uh, oh, we did have a name at one point. We did have a name. Yeah. Uh, we're just, we're just a bunch of guys. We're well, here to investigate. We're, we're supernatural investigators. We're sent here by our guild because they think that there's something um, unexplained going on in these parts. And it turns out that they were right because there's some strange things going on. So we're here I to mean, help. There's, there's a psycho on the loose. Yeah, well, there's don't... always a psycho on the loose. It's a weird world, man. I'm going to jump in and say you should probably tell your other friends or your other companions that something strange is going out going on out here 
Now, I know you kids are all very scared, but you have to you have to try and calm yourselves down. Why don't you go into your cabin? You'll be safe in there. I'll let my friend I, and I handle this. I puffed my chest out again. I'm not a kid, I said. I'm 30. <laughs> Oh, yes. So I asked Brock, where are the others? Have you seen them? I haven't seen anyone else. I also haven't seen the killer from what? From from what I can tell, the, none of these guys look like it. And, they and just, to, way too small. just to give more insight here. Separated. Just to give more insight here, Brock, you joined the Supernatural crew over the last year or so. Uh, they, they received quite a bit of accolades from the guild. Um, you, which you are part of, and since they had lost a member, you're filling in that spot. It's a temporary spot, depending on uh, depending on the, how the group feels. You would be a permanent fixture at some point, but for right now, you're you're filling in. All right. All right. So, where to next, everybody? Ned says we're gonna stay tight okay we're gonna sit in this cabin wait until morning we'll all stay up and then when steve gets back he'll sort things out i'll take brock aside and say why don't we leave these kids in here lock the door and you and i can check out this this area i mean do you think that's safe the other guy the other cabins look locked too well we can always wait here until the others show up but it might take a while yeah, that's true. I don't think we have time to wait. I think they should be safe enough here. Okay. There's plenty of them inside. I yell over, hey, what are you two whispering about? Share with the group. No secrets here. So my friend and I, we're going to go outside and try to find the answers to your problems. Why don't you kids wait here? Lock the doors. Make yourself some, some tea or some, some coffee. Just try to relax. The night will pass by quicker if you relax. We won't I, be too far. I take out my warhammer. If you call me a kid one more time, I start to grumble. Everyone, you see... With my temper. Everyone, you see... You're talking outside of the cabin, so you, you see coming along the road here, a figure hunched over, walking slowly. You can only see the silhouette in the moonlight. Wilbur, is that you? As the figure gets closer, now within you know, 50 feet or so, takes off his cloak, and you can see the old gray beard of Wilbur Coates. He says, because that's right, it's me. Life. That's right. I heard some, some racket going on. I'll hold out my hand and say, hold, hold, sir, who are you? Never mind that. Who are you? Well, my friend and I were sent here by our guild to investigate some supernatural happenings. We're here to help you and these kids. I think it's time who we spoke. Oh, please, who might you be? I think it's time we spoke. You finally need to hear the truth. Inside. Let's go. Okay. The name's Wilbur Coates. I'm the groundskeeper here. He sits down inside, all of them around the fireplace. Everything here is not as it seems. Sure, this is a camp. Hasn't been used in a while. But a tragedy struck here many years ago. I was a counselor at the time. Actually, I was kind of like what, what you're doing, Ned. Kind of like an instructor, as well as assistant to the director it wasn't Steve back then but regardless we had a couple of lax policies one night we saw this strange shooting star in the sky we heard a loud thud some kids went to explore where what had happened see what happened couldn't find anything. Couldn't find a trace of it at all. Just a big crater out in the woods. After that, a few, few more days passed. 
People kept swearing they saw some sort of light flashing by the lake. I've searched every inch of that lake. Can't find a thing. But I can swear, when that boy died, there was something wrong. He didn't drown. I found him. He had his whole body displayed. Some sort of freak show. Cut open. Organs thrown out. Someone wanted... Someone wanted to see what was inside of him. And I'll never forget that day. But for the camp, they tried to sweep it under the rug. I tried to tell everybody. I made it my life's goal to find out what happened there. So I maintained the grounds. 27 years later, here I am still talking with all you. This ends tonight. Whatever this thing is, the slasher, as they call it. Evil dies tonight. Wilbur, why did you not tell me the truth about Johnny when we met? Well, no, for the years, nobody's believed me. I've been shut down. I felt like it'd be more of the same. Well, have you found anything in all these years of you investigating? Anything else? No matter how small, anything. I took the boat out on every inch of that water. Search every every tree, every leaf. Nothing. How big is the lake? The caverns, that, that mine. Perhaps there was something going on in there. It's possible, but I don't know how. That old mining cavern really doesn't get used much. Hmm. The perfect place to hide. Did you ever well, go I'm, underwater? Uh, I'm not much of a swimmer. All right. A little old to well, hold my breath. Well, this mine entrance interest, interests me. Why don't we go check that out? I'll turn the Brock. I'll say, but I'd still like to wait for the others to get here. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We can't take these kids with us. No, definitely I can't take them with us. Well, maybe, um, maybe the old, I'll whisper, maybe the old man will stay and guard them. Yeah, he, I mean, if he's been around for 27 years, it means that this place isn't in it uninhabitable. It also means he can take care of himself. It's true. Yeah. I'll watch the kids. I won't let anybody else die on my watch. Yeah. Well, the kids are like, I don't know, old man. <laughs> so just, I'll ask him, point this in the direction of these mines. And we'll go check it out. Zuzu knows. Yeah, it's by the old... Um cabin that has all the, the vegetables and the food. Marcy, it's that way, right? And I kind of point towards the direction that I'm pretty sure it is. Hmm. Do you guys have a map of this camp? Uh, no. No, I don't think they do. Hmm. All right. It's, it's, well, it is here, though, on our map, so you can tell. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, they wouldn't know that. Um... Zuzu would know where to go. Yeah. Okay, Zuzu. well... Zuzu, yeah, would there. you like to guide us there? We'll protect you the best we can. And then you scurry back here once we're there. Sure. Follow me. And I pass light on uh, my, my staff. I guess I'm my walking stick. Uh, as, I leave, I'll, as I leave, I'll turn to Andrew. I'll say, see you around, kid. <laughs> I draw my hammer on the floor threateningly. Yen and come with us, everyone except the kids, or is it just me and 
that. Are we all uh, going? Or I think you're all going, no, yeah, or at least your can. your main your level one yeah. characters are going. Yeah. I was gonna say if it was just me, he was about to die. <laughs> <laughs> Well then, okay. Well, wait before before we go. I wanted to ask Wilbur, because like I thought we were staying, um, and I was gonna ask Wilbur questions, but can I like ask him a couple of things then before we head out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then I'll I'll turn to Wilbur and I'll say, Wilbur, how long have you known Steve? You said you were counselors together. Have you have you kept in contact this whole time? Did they say there were counselors together? Oh, uh, I thought he said I was a counselor along with Steve. If not, that's okay. I, I don't think. think he said he was a counselor along with Steve. Steve's new to this. He's he's the one renovating the camp. I think he said I was I was like I was, I was like doing what Steve was doing. Yeah, like what yeah. Steve was yeah. Yeah. what he was doing. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. So when did you first meet Steve? Oh, about uh, eight or nine months ago when he started working here renovating the camp. That's when mm. I saw him for the first time. Mm. And uh, has he ever, uh, has he ever brought anything back that was unusual in his supplies? I notice don't keep track of it all that much. Sorry. Oh, no problem. No problem. So from what you can tell, Steve is just, just a regular guy. Nothing nothing to worry about, nothing unusual. Right, right. Okay, okay, I see. That is all. Thank you so much, Wilbur. And uh, you're welcome for the beef wellington earlier. Oh, that's what that was. Delicious. <laughs> I'm so glad. And then right. and I say, stay safe, Wilbur. All right, I'm done. We can head out. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're good. No, okay, yeah. so uh, you head to the cavern, right? Yes, we are being guided to the cavern. Yeah, I'm assuming I led the way. I yeah, well, so you, once you get there, you know, you can go back to your friends. Do you see the map or no? I see black. Um, it's black. Hmm. Well, we're all in this. We're all here. Um, Yagnir, I think. Oh, lovely. M minus the I'll, kids. I'll then. place your characters. Don't worry about placing them. I see yours is fine, Steph. That's good. Okay. Let's see. Who's here? Yagnir's here. Okay, I see you now. Yeah. Zeus yeah, I see here. the map. Lothar and. Gray. No, not gray. Whoops. Yen. Yen. Okay. So I've got you here. Uh, you can all see the map? Yep. Okay, great. So that's the entrance there to the to the cavern. I'll just describe to you what, what you see uh, as you approach. Um, the cavern's uh, mouth juts out from the side of the rock in this otherwise vacant clearing. Uh, inside, you can see that there's a natural tunnel that leads and twists and winds deeper down below the earth. Okay. How are you going to approach this? And what, you are taking lanterns, torches? Um, I have, I have dark vision. I don't need one, but... No, dark vision. Uh, well, I have dark vision too, so. Me too. Well, I don't well, have dark was... vision. So <clears throat> I'll uh, really maybe good. I'll grab a torch and then cast firebolt at it real quick and then set it aflame. Sure. Alright, so you're heading in. Going in? I thought, um... Yeah, okay. I guess. All nah, right. these guys are tough. We'll try to protect them best we can, right, Yagnir? We'll try. So I mean, you guys the... are very squishy, so just be careful. I'm on my chest plate. Squishy this. <laughs> Pure iron. You see uh, slime-coated rocks oh, no. cover the ground in this area. It seems as the further you wind down into the cave, the more wet 
and slimy things become. Don't touch that slime. Where an ood live. So All right, let's, let's, we're going in. Yeah, th there's only, it seems to that the cave goes down and slowly winds around. You feel like you are, as if you're almost in like spiraling down. This doesn't seem like a mine as it had been described to you, but more of mm. a more of a formation. Whether it's been dug out or made by natural means, you're not too sure, but you do sense that this is leading you towards something more aquatic, water-like. As the air around you, you can feel that humidity and you can sense the slime on all of the all of the rocks that are that are in here. How wide is the tunnel that we're in? It's wide enough for all of you to walk comfortably, no more than okay. twenty feet wide. Mm -hmm. So you head uh, winding and twisting, and then it leads you to what appears to be a more developed chamber, something that was man-made. You could see sconces. Um, they are unlit, but they have torches lining this hallway. It narrows to about five feet. Any evidence of, like, mining equipment, or...? Nope. Okay. Any tracks on the floor for, like, a mine car? No. Hmm. And the tunnel, you said, narrows down to five feet in width? Yeah, the, 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 t the uh, tunnel narrows down... And you see sconces just lit, like as if somebody could have been here. So we're in single file now. Yep. Who wants to go in front? All right. I'll say everybody stick close. Can you put us, uh, Steph, in front? Yeah. Yeah, I'll go. In, I'll go in first. I'll we'll go behind over. her. And all you guys can follow us. I'll stay back. Yeah, I'm de I'll definitely go in, but not first. I'll place you on the map here. Map. Any um any strange smells? Odors? Smells like Yeah, that smell of a like a fishing dock. Hmm. Not like keen spirit. <laughs> that too. So there's like a is there a saltiness in the air? No, it's not a saltwater lake, but you feel the you sense the the body of water, the lake near you. Is it getting colder? Yeah, a bit cooler. Yeah. So we might we might be underwater. Okay, I think I've got everybody's token now. You see yourselves? Underwater. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna switch over our roll twenty screen. All right. Oh, so if you feel the walls on either side, I mean, are the walls cold? Yeah, they're slimy and wet and cold. So we're approaching the lake, or, or we might even be underneath the lake for all we know. So move your tokens, and I'll tell you what you see when you get to the rooms. Like holding my my yellow t-shirt cloak around myself. I'm shivering a little. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's that's type of weather. You know, those cool summer night maybe like early June, late May. It's still real cold at night. All right, so you're heading through and you get the sense that you are under the water. You mm. must be deeper below the docks or something like that. You see water jutting out to the south. Inside, you see a small little area here uh, at this lower series of caverns. You can see a collapsed rock pile or a collapsed little hole here, a sinkhole here um, and then you can see there's a five foot tall rock pile right about here there's also some going. items in this room, I'm not sure who can see what but it looks like there's things here for you to, to inspect, the ceiling in this area is natural rock it's ten feet high so it's not as not as tall as the cave that you were in. Um, but yeah, you also see, looks like some supplies here, as well as um, 
boxes full of foodstuffs, things like that. I'm going to cast light on a rock, and I'm going to drop it into that hole, see how far down it goes. It looks like that that descends down about 15 feet below to an even deeper cave. Hmm. The wall up here to our north. Like, or is that a Where? cave entrance? Right up here. I, the picture makes it look like there's a, an edge to it. Yes, it's a ledge. You could get up okay. there if you want to. Um, I'd like to investigate this pile over here. Sure. It looks like there's uh, clothes, like a black cloak, as well as uh, some other items like shovels, food. It looks like somebody's been here recently. Okay. The rock piles, are they piled in a, um, they look like they've been piled like in, in a man-made fashion? Does it anything symbol symbolic about it? Not that you can tell, no. They could be natural. Looks like that sinkhole opened up and left some right. behind. Um, all of this time passing here, um, you see, you don't hear anything, but you do feel like so, some sort of light coming from the south. You can't tell exactly where. Yen, you're closest to it. You just get a sense that something glows in the water for a brief moment and then goes away. Hmm. Uh, can I can I get a closer look at it? Like if I specifically try to try to get close, do I see anything? Can I discern anything about the flashing light? No, it, it fades away so quickly that once you notice it, it's gone. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'll call out to my my fellow party members, guys. There's a there's a flashing light in the water. I'll investigate it. You'd have yeah, to I'll go swimming. It. It looks weird. You would have to go swimming. Oh. I won't investigate it. I'll look at it. <laughs> You can't see anything in the water. It's too dark. Hmm. Wolfhart looks at the water nervously. Swimming, you say. Zuzu, did you did you say you're able to detect magic? I can, but hmm. I don't have any spell slots left. I did my familiar and I detected magic earlier. If you did as a ritual, it wouldn't count against your spell slots. Oh, it wouldn't? Oh, okay. Then I'll do that. But one. it would be your last spell. Yeah, that's my last level one spell I can use. Um, would I, am I close enough to be able to detect that if I was to do it? You don't see anything, so you probably don't think so. Yeah, I don't think I'd be able to detect anything, even if I did cast. Um, too far away. Or... Um. I have a control water spell. Would, would I be able to do anything? What does that let you do exactly? Um, let's see here. Until the spell ends, you control any freestanding water inside an area you choose that is a cube up to 100 feet on a side. You can choose from any of the following effects when you cast a spell as an action on your turn. You could repeat the same effect. Uh, or choose a different one. You can cause a flood, part the water like the Red Sea, redirect the flow, or cause a whirlpool. You definitely could redirect the water, move it, like part the Red Sea sort of thing. All right, let me do that. It's a 100-foot cube, right? Yeah. That's pretty good. That's a pretty decent amount. Uh, while you do that here in the water, uh, Steph, I think you said you were looking at the the gear here? Yes, I was. You find in one of the bags pieces of pages of a book. Look like they've been ripped from their from their uh, home. Okay. But they are in one of the packs along with some food and minor items. You can see that this is explaining. It's written in common. And it explains that there's a creature described only in 
oh, the name of this is referred to as Aberrant Horrors. Uh, it details that they look humanoid, but do not possess humanoid psyches. And as such, they've been known to be immune to psychic assaults. Okay. Another page that you've thumbed through says that these aberrant horrors are from a place far beyond the cosmos. And that because of this, we cannot comprehend some of their abilities. They have a tendency to make those around them descend into madness. Um, okay. Um, I assume from working with the Supernatural team the past year, I've seen s some weird stuff. Not, not all of it. But um, I relay this as just kind of like a, hey, Yagner, have you heard this? Um, and really, Am I standing? Well, I'm not standing by you right now. No, but you're getting ready to open up the uh, the ocean, or excuse me, the ocean, the uh, the lake here, right? Yeah, I mean, if she wants to run down there and ask me, I mean, sure. So I you heard her, heard her, and I said that the old man told us about a shooting star that came 27 years ago. No one could find it. You're telling me. Yeah, he, he shouts. He's the media. He's the intermediary here. Okay. <laughs> you, you use your hundred foot cube ability to control the water, and you part hundred feet down of the water. And below, you can see um, there's ground, as well as it looks like some raised columns. So that looks like perhaps. There are more tunnels underneath the water. Hmm. Well, we can go investigate it. I mean, I can hold it for, um, for uh... The tunnels don't look like they're accessible from the water, but perhaps the hole that you threw something down before would be the way to get there. Hey, we the still have right. another way north, too. Don't forget. We have, there's a right. ledge that we can climb up. Maybe there's another way down there. Concentration up to 10 minutes. Um, why don't we try that ledge then? Maybe it'll, maybe it'll loop around. It does loop around. If you inspected Zuzu, yep. you can see that the water level here is uh, flush with the floor. And you can you know, see out a little bit. And you can see that there's um, water flow that would probably lead out to the lake. Hmm. I'm going to relay that to the group, saying that water is a little less deep over here, but <clears throat> a little further down, it looks like the water is moving pretty quickly. Looks like it's probably headed out to the lake. Your guess is you're probably under the dock and under the, the fishing yeah. outpost. Uh, okay. Well, if I'm parting the water, can we just, like, walk? I'm not, like, actually moving my token, but can I just, like, can we just walk out into yeah. it? Yeah, you could, yeah. As long as, as long as it's being parted? Yeah. You can see that it looks like there's more underneath the floor level of this this area. Yeah. Why don't we try that, guys? Like, you know, I just have to concentrate on what I'm doing. Hey, lead the way. All right, so you Where's head... Brock? You head down uh, the you. hole? Look, Rock, go in front of me. She's the muscle. Okay. He's the muscle. Yeah, we can We're go going... down the hole. Um, is there a place to tie a rope to? So, Because it's about 15 feet down. I don't want anyone to fall. You got stuff while to tie. We talk... hmm? While we all tie rope to each other. <laughs> sure. Okay. So we're all uh, tied up. Can... So when it falls, like, you can drag it back. Sounds good. Yeah. You know what I mean? All right, so I'm going to move your tokens a bit. They're on the same map, but I'm just going to move them. Huh. Ooh. Okay. So you can see a pile of rocks here at the floor where they probably fell from up above. 
Right. Um, you can decide where you'd like to go. You see a passage to the west and a passage to the northeast. Walk around here. Mm -hmm. Well, there's can water we... here. Can we tell? Can we tell oh, okay. which direction has like greater humidity? Mm, I don't think well, there is water a to difference. One way. Yeah, I don't think no, you feel we'll a difference. That, and then I think we should go the other way. Sure. I don't think you feel a difference in the humidity level. There's water, quite a bit of water around you in both what, both directions. So, if I'm uh, is my concentrate? Can I use my concentration to part this water, or is it only for the other body? Uh, that's a good question. Look, look at the. Does it say it has to be? You, you pick a um, a spot, and then that's that's the spot that does yeah, it. Let me look. Um, so you do see though in this area, this flood flooded sort of chamber uh, stagnant water at a maximum depth of four feet you can see tunnels connecting to it both here in the north and to the south and if everybody just moves their token here you can see what I'm referring to it says until the spell ends you control any freestanding water inside an area you choose yeah so you can't do it on a different area yeah unfortunately oh, yeah, that has to be... You can concentrate on the one up there. You can still separate the water, but right. it's, it's up there still. It's above you. Okay. All right. All right, so where do you want to go next? Uh, why don't we try the other tunnel? Sure. You head out this way, and you can see a very similar stagnant water. Uh, this one is about a uh, similar four feet in depth. Okay. All right. Go over here. Do one of you big, strong men want to try wading into that water? Oh, and I, I yeah. yeah, I look at Brock being six foot five. Yeah, I'll go in. Let's see. Um, so I am standing in the water. I don't go too far from, from the shore for now. Can I roll perception? Do I see anything in the water? How clear is the water? It's not too clear, but it's not too deep. So you can see there's like old fishing nets, a um, lot of rock underneath you. Uh, you can see some, some rock poking out through the surface of the water. Mm -hmm. There's a passage to the south. Okay. Yeah, so say, can you walk south, Steph? See what's going on there. Um, it's a very, very long tunnel to the south here. Well, if so, you go back to where you were, say, like, like you were, you were here, right? If you go back here, I was going to say, try go down this way, see what it's like, but. No, if I stand at the edge here okay. so I can still see you. Yeah, yeah. The tunnel curves. So that's as far as I can go before I lose okay. eyesight of you guys. If okay. you want, I don't know. Um, what do we have? We have a half foot. Uh, I'm sorry, whatever. We have a human, a female, human, male, and dwarf. Mm. Dwarf will probably drown. How deep is the water? Four feet. Four feet. Hmm. So I'm like four and a half feet. So it'll be like at my neck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll be fine. Uh. I don't like they this. They have a they have a gnome that normally works with them. <laughs> Um, we need bear. All right, move yourselves down below. Gotta kill Yenna. What? How? Move yourselves how down heavy, below. <laughs> how heavy is the dwarf? How heavy is the dwarf? He's. A, I'll solid. be fine. Don't worry about it. He's sturdy. Never toss a dwarf. I'll be fine. Move like a hippo. Like take big jumps when you hit the bottom of the water. No. <laughs> you guys are getting my beard wet. We can toss you to each other if you want. You stay away from me. Take out my hammer. <laughs> All right. So you head you head down. Move your tokens. Yep. You come to an opening here. Similarly, more gear, supplies, crates. You can see that there's a... It looks like this is a place where someone has come often. You also find chests uh, kind of stuck in the back here, locked in the back of this cavern. Why don't we check out some of these chests? 
You see all of these things, but before you can check the chest, which... Actually, no, I'll let you check the chest. You can open it up. Um, they are locked, but, you know, you could break open these locks if you need to. They're not anything more than a simple padlock. There's gold. Gold upon gold upon gold. 20, mm. perhaps 20,000 gold pieces all in total. It's an estimate. You're just looking. Each chest is filled to the brim. How old do these chests look? Uh, some of them older than others, but they look like there are a variety of of dates. Like, some of them might have been new. Others may have been old. What's most most obvious, and there's no token for this, but in the water, what appears to be sticking out of the water is some sort of vessel. A ship of some sort. Hmm. Like the one that was in the book? Like the one that Yen saw in the book. Yen, you can take out the book to reference, but... Oh, I'll take out the book and I'll quickly shuffle through until I find that same image of the strange-looking boat. Yeah, now there are writings on the sides and the margin that you can't read, but the main text underneath that <laughs> tells you this information. It says that aberrant horrors travel through the cosmos in small, elliptical ships composed of strange, nearly indestructible metal. The ship possesses a crystalline core that powers it. You also read on to say that it has some sort of relationship with the aberrant and that their connection is psychic. I'm going to cast Detect Evil on the ship. Yeah. Sorry, if my dog barked. If, if their link is psychic, then we should be very careful. It knows we're here. Um, Zuzu, I see that you're going to the left there. I'm just going to stop yeah. you for a brief moment. You would get close to it before you see Steve. I gotta bring Steve's token in here. I was gonna say, I didn't want to go fully in that room. I just wanted to kind of like peek around. Steve, sure. like boss Steve? Where's Steve? I'm down here, Steve. Mm -hmm. oh, this is all attack Steve right now. What Steve are you doing? doing? We have three squishies and two. <laughs> Too ready to go, people. So we're we're good. We'll just bottleneck him as soon as he comes out of that little tunnel. <laughs> Susan's gonna get one cast off before he's immediately <laughs> fireballed. I'm gonna laugh so hard if that's what happens, and then Azula pops out of one of these chests of gold. <laughs> Just women like Scrooge McDuck in it, like, oh hey guys, I was just That's a shadow here. sorcerer. She'd be like, I was, I was always here. I was just in the shadows. <laughs> uh, <laughs> See you, met Steve. Proceed to get fireballed as well. <laughs> okay. So, Steve comes out, and Steve says, "Well done, right on, right on." I can't believe you, uh idiots were able to uh, make it all the way down here. I should really congratulate you. I'm gonna say, did you murder those kids up there? What? Me? No, 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 no. I didn't do anything, alright? Look, I know how this makes me look, alright? Makes me look like I'm some sort of evil villain, bad guy. But you're mistaken, alright? I actually, on the contrary, I kind of like children. That sounds weird, man. Funny way of showing it. No, no, no. It's not. Over. Did you just call us idiots? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
from the first time meeting you, I thought that you, uh, especially the way your halfling friend was acting, pretty sure that you were, uh, you were all gonna die, probably, but I knew that our patrons were snooping on me, spying on me. I see you found the money that I've embezzled. Look, I don't really want to do too much talking here, because it's not gonna matter. The thing's already on its way. What, what thing? thing? Oh, <laughs> Jinx. You say in say unison. Yeah. <laughs> Owe me a mead, man. The creature. The slasher, as they call him. That's what the kids say. It's a pretty lit nickname, isn't it? I roll my oh, eyes. Boy. Not this again. Right on, right on. Well, I'll see. I'll ask the uh, squishies. Is this your boss? More like an acquaintance. How do you know that thing's on its way? Oh, it, well, it's, again, I've been studying these things my whole life. I see you found uh, my book there. Someone went snooping into my, my offices. Yen. Uh, yes. I'll, I don't uh, think we are the most suspicious people here, but continue, Steve. <laughs> well, look, you, you stole some of my stuff. And like I said, I'm right on. Good for you. But this ends here, unfortunately. You're not going to make it out of here alive. You'll never be able to tell another soul what you saw here. You're mistaking. You're the one not making out of here alive. <laughs> like readying well, uh, uh Listen, old man. Listen. I uh, spent my whole life looking for this creature. And I finally, finally found it, all right? I knew there was more to this universe than what we have here. I scoured the earth reading texts just like that one there. And when I found that there was this legend that a meteor came down, disappeared, kids started dying, I knew that I had to find the, I had to find it here. It would be here that I'd uncover the truth. And I did. And look at this beautiful ship. So, so wait, are, are you the dude who's dissecting people? No, I'm, I'm merely the one that woke it from its stasis. I attempt to charm him. Sure, go ahead. Uh, it's a saving, right? It's a, it's a saving throw, right? You charm person? Yes. Yeah. Just give me one second. I'm going to do something with the map here. Let's see. We want a saving throw. And let me look up his. I believe it's a 13. Yeah. I'll tell you right now. His saving throw is actually pretty good. 18. Oof. 18. Oof. So. Where's the shot? <laughs> yeah. He says, oh, you and your tricks. Listen, I've been at this a long time. You want to see magic? <laughs> You've got it. Oh, look. Hey, guys. Oh, look. We're not alone. And then behind... Who's this? This back one here. This is Lothar. You hear sloshing yeah. through waters, and you can see now in 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 the light of your lantern the horror, the slasher, as they call it. Mind flare. Uh, I'll describe it to you, but <clears throat> it doesn't look like a mind flare per <laughs> se. This creature has a, a crude mask over its face, but behind the holes of the mask, you can see a series of horrific blinking eyes and writhing tentacles that come from underneath it. You can see it's very tall, about eight feet tall. It wears similar clothes to what uh, Steve has on right now, this cloak just made for a much larger person. It's got chains wrapped around it, 
It also has body parts and organs attached to those chains. It has multiple hands. It's got uh, one strong left arm <clears throat> holding a some sort of machete or cleaver. And the other, it's got hooks and a knife. And those three arms hold out in front of it. Um, you can see organs, more organs from God knows who it just took it from. And it's approaching through the water. I don't know if everybody else can see it, but Lothar can see it. Yeah, I see it. Okay. I start yelling and backing up slowly. Guys, behind us. All right. Let's roll for initiative, everybody. Let's go. Let's go with... Uh, so, just as a reminder, we, we do group initiative here, right? Okay, so I rolled for the right. creature. Steph, why don't you roll for the sure. villains? I rolled high, guys. 19. Oh. Oh. We'll be going first. Take a moment to discuss your plan right now. And then we'll we'll jump into it. <clears throat> okay. Um, what are you guys' I thoughts? I, I wonder if spell. Make sure Steam doesn't get away. I was gonna say, do you think if we killed Steve, that would kind of break that connection or something? Or I mean, he, never, he didn't say he was controlling it. That's true. He just woke it up. There's a. There's a psychic link between the aberrant horror and the ship, so I'm thinking of using shocking grasp to electrocute the water, and then like you know send electricity through the metal hull of the ship. Burn out the ship. Yeah. If you want to try to do that, um, I can try to uh, distract the monster. I guess keep some sort of distance between the squishies and it. Um, so if you don't I'm mind me doing you. what. I'm going to prepare a spell. Okay. See if it works this time. So if you don't mind me going first, I'll try to get in between you, yeah. the squishies, and everyone. So, um, Who are you calling squishies? You, little squishy. <laughs> squish, 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 squish. Meanwhile, I just like yelling. Is my squishy cannon. popped. <laughs> like, my squishy has popped and <laughs> is. So, like, you're doing better than me, man. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, go with the group. Who wants to go first? I'm going to go first. I'm going to go up. Uh, brr. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to just try to distract him a bit-ish, maybe. And I am going to brr, throw a hand axe at it. Where'd you start your turn? Uh, where did I start it? I started behind these guys, right here. Gotcha, go ahead. One, two, three... Yeah, I'm not going crazy here. I think, yeah, I go here. That's fine, right? Totally. Okay. Um. Oh, I rolled terribly. It's an 11, but I can attack a second time. So yep. I'm going to throw my other one at it. I'll have to collect them later. Sure. Uh -huh. Nope, that was even worse. Cool. Glad to see that my season one rolls are staying consistent. Just as good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> we go to the enemies next. The horror is going to trudge through the water and get right up to you. It's going to... Uh, it's going to start by using its... an ability here. So I need everyone within 30 feet of it Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Can I do one more thing? I apologize. Yeah. I'm still used to this. I'm not used to this character. Um, I'm going to pull Frost Rune. Bonus action. Increase everyone's sturdiness for 10 minutes. Um, gain plus two bonus on all ability checks and saving throws that use strength or constitution. Ooh, so. that'll, that'll be coming handy, yeah. So that's for everyone. Ev uh, everyone. Is it within 30 feet of you? Give me a second here. I'm sorry. I know I... How do I check my whole thing? Because that would be Yagnir, but not Zuzu. You look it up, and I'll I'll do okay. the. Okay, I'll I'll take a look. Stuff. Sorry about yeah. that. Everyone, give me a intelligence saving throw. This will also incur a madness point if you fail it. Uh oh, intelligence. 
Oh. 18. Nice. Oh. With a minus Yen. one, too. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Yen, a 16. Uh, let's see here. Steve, and Yagnir. 14. Zuzu, you're actually, you're actually far enough away that you don't suffer this. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm 35 feet away. Dang, that's a good roll, too. <laughs> Why is oh, yeah, you there? are. You're 35 feet away. Never mind. Yeah, you're 30 feet from, from Steph. Right. Gotcha. So you don't have to take it either, but the three of you, uh, Brock, Lothar, and Yen, looks like you all pass. So nice, nice job. Uh, yeah, so you don't suffer this wave of madness, but you can sense that it is attacking you psychically and uh, it almost makes you turn tail and want to run away. Mm. All right, that's the creature's turn. Uh, at the end, we're going to go to the group. Oh, and Bobby, that's just for me. I'm sorry. That was a personal shield to myself, not to get everyone excited. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Got gotcha, Th That's gotcha. on me. Gotcha. Go ahead, Steve. You want to go? I'm going to cast banishment on the creature. Sure. Let's see. You use a legendary action to counterspell it. I'm just looking to see if Steve has counterspell. Okay. Uh, is counterspell, or excuse me, uh, it's a charisma saving throw, correct? Yeah. Oh, it's going to pass. Ah! Yeah, it's going to pass with a pretty decent roll. 18? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you try to blink it out of existence for a brief moment, and the creature now turns its massive, bulb bulbous eyes towards you. Behind the mask, though, you just see them. The holes of the mask allow you to see the, the eyes scurrying about. Steve's going to go. Let's go with, yeah, let's do this. All right, so let's pick, yeah, since you did this, Yagnir, let's do this on Yagnir. Oh. Yagnir, give me a dexterity saving throw. All right, so Steve holds his hands up, says some words in a language you're not too sure of. A vertical column of fire roars down upon you from top of the cave, kind of like a Ouch. cylinder on you. It's 10 yeah. foot radius. Um, oh, it's 10 foot radius. I can actually get Zuzu in this as well. Yeah. Sorry, I, could, I thought it was only 10 foot, so I could only pick one of you, but it's 10 foot radius. So I'm going to hit both of you. You need to be dexterity saving throw as well. Dexterity saving throw. Yep. Here we go. Hold on. Sorry. The dexterity. Here we go. Nice. What did I get? Let's see. A 19. Oh, perfect. Very nice. So you take, Steve, you take 21 damage in total. Uh, 12 okay. fire and 9 radiant. For a total of 21. Zuzu, you take half of 21, so 10. I am immediately like, singed from, like, <laughs> as I'm cross, like, trying to knock off the flame from my beard, it just, like, I, it's too fast. And now I'm all in flames. Are you and... unconscious? Yeah, but I only have 8 HP. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You go unconscious. Uh, group, you're up. Yen or Lothar? Um, I'll run to Steph's side to help blockade the creature from attacking. Gotcha. And, um, I'll swing at it with my warhammer. Sure. A 24. You hit. Do you want to smite or... I don't, don't think you I have can smite, smite until level You don't two. have smite. You're only yeah. first level. I forgot. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Six damage, bludgeoning. 
Awesome. That's awesome. the most anyone's done yet. You're doing well, man. And I let out my little <laughs> roar. Ah, I'll show you, child. Uh, what type of damage is this? Regular bludgeoning? Yeah, just a warhammer. Okay. The creature is going to take a legendary action after you're done to attack you with his machete. Bring it on. <laughs> I got my shield. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oops. <clears throat> Total of 19. Damn it. Does that hit? It hits. Hey, it can I... Seven... Um... Yeah. I think, can I do the cloud rune? You could. Uh, this is your one time to do it, though. You sure you want to do it to save Lothar? Save a, a, a squishy. Save a squishy. You can. You can absolutely yeah, do I it. Yeah, I mean, this guy, this guy but, just ran up to it. I have mad respect for this guy who just ran only, up to this thing. The only problem, though, is that you have to pick another target, and there are no other enemies within... 30 feet. Oh, shoot. Yeah, Steve's too far. Yeah, he's just too far away. Yeah. Darn it. Never mind. I'm sorry. I'm you take sorry. 17 Lothar. slashing damage, Lothar. 17? That's 17. nothing. As I fall to the ground, I'm conscious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yen. Uh, all right. So I look to, you know, Lothar and Zuzu's bodies and kind of realize I'm the only one left now out of everyone, my group that I started with, and I'm scared. I I start to kind of get a little too panicked, and I just kind of like, I'm going to run over to the water. Um, and can I stick like a hand into the water and then cast Shocking Grasp? You can. What would you, what would your, what would your intentions be to yeah, so I'm gonna try to burn the ship. Like, um, let me read you a description of the ship. So the ship is a okay. large vehicle. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's got a little capsule in it to hold a creature, probably the size of the aberrant horror. Um, it does look like it's made of some sort of metal. In our language, it would be steel. Uh, you get the sense that you probably won't harm the ship. You won't be like setting it on fire or electrocuting the ship. Well, maybe electrocuting the ship, but. Um, you get the sense that maybe you would need to get closer to it. You do see it a crystal that's kind of set inside the hull of the ship. And that crystal is pulsing. It seems to be the thing that maybe at times would glow, and lighting up all the caverns, giving a faint light. That might be something you want to grab at. So if you want to go into the water for it, that seems like it's pulsing energy, whereas the rest of the ship looks mundane. Yeah, okay, then then I guess I would probably go for the crystal. Yeah, you um, could wade into the water and and get that mm -hmm. crystal. Give me a damage on it. You don't need to roll the hit, because it's, uh, it's not moving. Could that create, uh, like, an EMP effect on it? Where you can shut know. it down? So just, yeah, roll it. Yeah, perfect. So five lightning? Yes. I wait in there, snatch up the crystal, tuck it in safe with my book. All right. So you go to touch at the uh, the thing, and as you reach for the crystal to shock it, you also feel it kind of fighting you back. You take three points of radiant damage, and your hit point maximum is decreased by that amount as well. However, you shock it with the five points and you dislodge it from the hull of the ship. The creature looks over to you and seems very upset that you have done that. It's gonna take a, well, if you have anything else to do on your turn, you can. That was your action. So you have bonus action? Uh, I, I don't think so. Maybe I'll like step back out of the water. Sure. Okay. The creature is going to take a legendary action, and it's going to move. This movement, I believe, is free of uh, free of attacks of opportunity. I'll double check. That's a lie. Hundred percent lie. Take an attack of opportunity if you like. Yes. <laughs> Thirteen. 
That's not gonna hit it. Yeah. You've, I don't know just, why yeah. I suck at roll. Oh, because we're playing Supernatural 20 again. Right. <laughs> suck at roll. That's why. Do we, uh, do we all get an attack of opportunity, or? No, I just just uh, Brock, because it moved away. Okay. So it's it's coming towards you again, as it sees you, the crystal on the floor by the shore, and you uh, stepping back away from it, you dislodge, it's coming towards you. That's the end of the round, is it not? You think that's yep. everyone? Okay. Mm. Uh, let's see here. Dobby and Azula. The two of you are wandering through the cavern up top here. You hear noise of struggle, but before you do that, you were probably just chatting, you know, like Dobby just being like, we're not going to find anything down here. Z and Azula's uh, like, you know, come on, I hear something. This place you... smells. <laughs> it oh, does this, smell. this cave is too big to, for there not to be something in here. Let's see. Let me put your real names on the screen. Oh, Here we go. There's Dobby. Dobby and Azula, you enter into the map. Can you place yourselves in up here? By the, uh, yep, the low water. Yep. So you just, just about, you just entered the water. You're wading through. Dobby's really upset. But Dobby, you're no longer, um, an elf, right? Can you just describe yourself to the group? I mean, I'm not pretty. I'm not pretty. I got fangs. I got a pimply old crooked looking face with a big nose. I got like some comment. pointy, pointy <laughs> ears. I kind of smell pretty bad. I look like a hobgoblin. And I'm not quite used to this body. And there's hockey. Of course, hockey looks as good as ever. As ageless. better than ever. Yeah. Ageless. Ageless hockey. So you hear sounds of struggle coming from down below. I'll insert you into the initiative like normal from here, okay? Uh, your turn. We'll just say you, you heard it a little closer so you can get it back in the fray. All right. So we'll put you right here. All right. So let's begin. Roll a dice. Christian. All right. Here we go. I don't nice. think I meant to do the plus three. I think it's just 20. I rolled a six. So, group, you're up first. Uh, probably somebody in the cavern going first, though. Yeah, I'm wondering if you should grab if you should grab the crystal now that she had the chance. Can I um, cast Guiding Bolts at wait, the crystal? Wait, wait. Uh, give us a second, Steve. I think. Yeah, can, discuss, yeah. discuss, discuss. Yeah, we have to discuss first. Um... Because Yen has the crystal, which seems very important to this guy. You want to try to break the crystal out of her hand? I want to, yeah, let's try to destroy the crystal. Oh, actually, I should have gave Michelle a chance. Do you want to hold the crystal, or would you drop it when it hurt you? Oh, right. If it, okay, so if it hurt me, then I would, I would probably, like, kind of throw it a little bit away from myself, like, startle. Gotcha. So it might like roll five feet away. Sure. So it'd be like right on the floor next to you or in the same square as the shore. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's right here. We'll just put a little little option token here. Um, so also one thing to note, Azuzu, Azuzu and uh, Lothar are not dead. They are dying. So we'll need death saves from you when it gets to your turns. Okay. All right, so let's begin. Uh, who wants to go first, Yen then? Or is somebody else gonna go? Uh, uh, I was gonna try to damage the crystal, um, if I could. But I can't, if she threw it away, could I cast Guiding Bolt on the crystal? Sure, I believe so. Just, yeah, double check to see what the target is, if it could be, has to be a creature or not. Because if it's not a, creature then well this is a creature of your choice so, I guess so I then can you it. can't choose this then yeah hmm. um what else could I cast at it uh what about burning hands say it one more time burning hands yeah you could you could what do that but hands? you could do that but you'd have to move so you don't get into it 
get uh, Zula. Uh, sorry, I keep getting your names wrong. Yen into it. Uh, can I yell out to her to move? And I'll do it. Um, you could ready an action. Do you have more movement, though? Did you move at all? Um, not this turn so far, no. So you can move and then do it. Yeah. Okay, as long as she's out of there. Um, Go ahead, roll your damage. I'll use, I'll use it as a second level. As okay. A second level spell slot. So Go like ahead, sure. yeah, yeah. It'll be 46 damage. Um, I forgot if he gets a saving throw or not. or Well, it's not alive, so... Just roll 46? Yeah, you're 46. It's not going to get a roll. It's an uh, object. Right. 14. You flame the ground where the crystal's located, scorching the earth around it. When the flames and the smoke clear, you see the crystal just standing there, pulsing. Mm. It's sitting on the ground as untouched as before. Yeah, it's resistant to fire. Okay. Steve's gonna go. Steve's gonna take out a dagger and run up to you. Ouch. Some Steve on Steve action here. <laughs> that doesn't sound so good. <laughs> Steve is going to... He'll actually... gonna. He's gonna do something else. He's gonna... Before he does it, he takes his dagger and before he moves, he's gonna cast Hold Person on you. Give me a... Let's see. Wisdom saving throw. Ooh. You fail. So, uh, mm. unfortunately, you feel as though after the fire wore away, you are now paralyzed. All right? And he runs up to you with the dagger as if he tends to stab you with it in your mm -hmm. paralyzed state. All right. Now we go to the group. I I look at Steve running up to us and Yagmir, who I recognize is probably one of my only chances of getting out here alive. I'm gonna. Oh wait, did I already go? Or no, that no, was the last round? That was last yeah, round. Yeah. Okay. New turn. All right. Sweet. 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 So I'm gonna step around Yagmir and I'm gonna do a. I guess I'll cast a firebolt. Sure. And... You probably want to do it though away from so you don't get disadvantage like it's five feet away oh should, should I so where should I go somewhere like here or above okay. just so that you're not uh, next to him because you'll get disadvantage on a range attack gotcha okay thank you um, okay so then I'll, I'll cast a, a fire bolt onto Steve 16 to hit. oh that'll hit yeah for sure alright sweet Take that, Steve. Oh, and, and I just, I'm like imagining a greater battle where I can like, you know, incinerate an entire forest with my fire magic. So I'm like trying my hardest to do that, but I forgot that I don't have my powers anymore. So I'm like, Ugh! and instead of casting a giant fireball, it's just like, so I just it's, a, it's still three damage. That's what the crystal did to you. It hurt. It hurt. Yeah. yeah. It hurt. All right. I actually have I have the uh, whoops. I have the wrong token for Steve out. Not that it matters. Is that it? No, actually, no. I'm gonna no. I, I I totally I have the right token, but there's one on the tokens page that I should have used. It's a slightly different one. I'm gonna leave this one out here for now. It's not not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. I don't want. We know which one isn't that. ours. That's Steve. Okay, so a beautifully maintained beard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, so we go to... After that, we go to the scary people. Uh, oh, Yen. Ooh, sorry. You need to give me a saving throw as well at the start of your turn. You're too close to this creature. What kind of saving throw? Wisdom. Okay. Total? That's fine. How's an 11? An 11. So you are um, frightened. So you actually are going to have disadvantage on your attacks. Can you give me one more attack? And you can't go closer to the slasher. Oh, okay. Which I'm sure doesn't bother you at all. You still hit Steve. 
And you also can uh, take another saving throw to see if it ends at the end of your turn. <laughs> it does not end. You're I'm still scared. scared. Yeah. All right. So the slasher gets to go now. He's going to move over to you. Uh, he looks at you. And he's going to raise up his machete as he kind of stands over the crystal. No, 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 no. No, I got a better idea. He's going to attack you. with a, Grab you. He's going to grab you. Give me a athletics check or acrobatics check to get out of the way. Athletics or acrobatics. Do acrobatics. Oh, God. Okay. A five. Be a your five. worst, Bob. <laughs> All right. With his second attack, he's going to grab you tight. You can see under, you get pulled into his tentacly beard, and he crushes you with a total of you're you're dead. I I I'm rolling it, but you're you're dead. With a total I'm of you're dead. <laughs> Thirty three damage. Yeah, I'm I've died six times over. Man, this this adventure is gonna really pad my stats on player deaths. The massacre. I, as I die, I I kind of like. I, I try to scream, but it just comes out as a little wheeze and a whistle. And then I say, Siri. And that's it. That's it, Siri. Oh, poor again. All right. Group, you're up. Me. Oh, where did I get the damage that um, Steve gave me? It was a, like a cone of fire, you said? Yeah. So that was fire damage? It was fire damage. Oh, and I totally forgot about that. I have, damage, um, I? so the tiefling has hellish resistance. You have resistance to fire damage. Oh, yeah, you take half it then. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I take only half of it. It was 21, okay. so it rounds down to, sorry, 20, yeah, 21, so it rounds down to 10. Okay. So, yeah, okay. You, you absolutely save that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. So that's, that's that. Now we go to you, Steph. All right, Brock. I'm going to run up, and I'm going to try to hit him this time, because I did not last time. Okay. Um, you were out of the range, good. 23 hits, I think. You hit. Hopefully. Yes, you do. Okay, cool. Um, and then... Is that... So that is 10 slashing. Good. What's the other number there? 7 for? Uh, oh. Do you have... A type of damage on your weapon that's not. Give me a second here. I'm sorry. It's all right. You have the, I assume, the dueling feet to give you extra oh, two. Yeah, I've got a dueling one. The dueling fighting style. Yeah, so you, you do 10 for sure. I see that. And then there's a seven here that I'm confused as to what that could be for. But either way, we'll take the first number, the 10 for sure. I, you know, I have it clicked on. I'll talk to you afterwards about it. It was, I remember putting together my character and being confused by that. So please, I'll talk oh, okay. to you afterwards. It's yeah, not no a big worries. deal. So you um, hit it for 10 damage. You get the sense that it doesn't all go through. It seems like whatever damage you're doing, you're not passing its resistance. You also knock off its mask, and you can now see fully the tendrils coming down out of its face, the multiple eyeballs scanning the room in all direction. Hmm. All right. All right, now we go to... Wait, I, I can hit a second time. You can hit I, it a second time. Yes. Yes. Go for it. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to hit it again. 14. Does that hit? It does not. Okay. Mm. And that, uh, okay. I think that's what I have right now. Okay. All right. And then that's the end of the round here. We got the heroes coming from up top. Azula and Dobby, do you want to double move to get into the room? Yeah, or do you have, a, uh, do you have any yeah. other speedy way to get there? Um, I do, but I need line of sight, and I don't think I can get around the curve to use it. Which one? Misty step. Is that 30 feet, right? Yeah, but I have to be able to see. So you could misty so, step 30 feet straight ahead, then move. But I could just move 30 feet. But I, you could misty step's a bonus action, or not? Is that not uh, correct? I don't know, actually. I oh, know. yeah. Misty Step is a bonus action. Right, so you could 30 feet and then move. 
And then, like, cast a, an ability kind of thing? Well, yeah, you just can't cast a... It's got to be a cantrip, right? Because Misty Step is a higher level spell. Yeah, it's a first level spell. Yeah. Or second, I, level, second level spell. I think I have 30 feet of movement. Um, um, here's what I'm thinking about doing. I'm going to double move and 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30... I should be able to get right here. Oops. How about this? Why don't we just say, if you were to double move, you can get to the cavern opening. Okay, so if I were to get, I could get like right here? Yeah, you can get to where you could see the body of uh, Lothar. And Dobby, if you were to use Misty Step and then run, you could still be here and have an action. Hockey will follow. Um, can I see anything from where I am? Yep, yeah, when you get here, you can see over this. This rock is not as tall as the rest. Doesn't uh, connect, okay. so you could see and you could see over what's the scene. So I think Hawkey can do sixty feet flying. So if he goes, mm. um, he can get further. Oh, I guess he'll stay with me. So that would be one move for Hawkey to, to get to here. Then right, yeah. So he'll just stay there. Uh, um, you do see Yagnir paralyzed as a cult member is about to stab him, and you see uh, Brock struggling mightily with this hulking creature. And, uh, okay, so I can just cast cantrip then, because I yeah. used a spell already. Go ahead. Um, so, yeah, I'll see the creature and just immediately cast... Um, let's go ahead. Told the dead at it. Okay. Wisdom save, correct? Um, yes, wisdom. All uh, right. DC 15. Uh, nine. All right, so then he takes it's 2d8, so 13 necrotic damage. Nice. Okay. All right, that's the end of the round, correct? Azula, you can't take an action. Um, I'm actually going to use uh, sorcery points to quicken. Nice, um, make something a bonus. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, although the only thing I think I can do without hitting anyone else is just casting a firebolt. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I think I'll do that because everything else will actually. You can decide while you do that. Yen and Lothar, give me death saves. Yeah, I'm just going to do a, a firebolt. Gotcha. Does a 16 hit? It does. Oh, it's going to be 9. 9 damage. fire? Wow, I rolled a 1. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, nine, 9 is still damage. Yeah, it's better than nothing. Yen and Lothar. Lothar, you failed your first one? No, no I rolled a d10 on the first one. Gotcha. So you succeed on your first death save. Yen, you fail. So you're taking one, one failed save. Uh, the creature I did the damage to. Nine fire. Bear. Wait up, everybody. <laughs> How, what, Bear, you're probably looking for Dobby, right? Oh, definitely. Uh, before before I start role-playing as Bear, um, have Bear and Dobby been traveling together for the past year? Dobby, when like, did your accident happen? Shortly after our last adventure. So, for the last year or so, Dobby yeah. has been the, I would say like seven months, maybe. Seven months, you've known Dobby as the Hobgoblin Dobby. Okay, so this is not a new form. Okay. It's not new to you, no. You you were, you were came here searching for uh, the camp with Dobby as a Hobgoblin. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So, well, you'll, well, same for you. We'll just say a double move on the end of this turn will bring you here. If you have any other bonus actions or things to do when you get here, you can. But for now... We'll just keep you to the side and uh, start this round. But Michelle, it's your turn. Give me an initiative roll. Oh, snap. Okay, let's go. Initiative. I got a 16. I got a 3. All right. So the creature this time is now going to take its... Uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a... We'll do a grapple on you. Uh, Bork? Sorry. Brock? <laughs> 
Bork. I'll do a grapple on you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, you have advantage on strength right now? Or no? I do. Uh, plus two or something like that? Your yes. frost rune. Plus what did that give you? Okay. So to add this to the to the, to the the athletics check here. Give me a opposed athletics check. Okay. Athletics plus, plus two. So 24. Okay. So this creature, while it's probably got a foot on you, even though you're pretty tall and bulky yourself, it tries to grapple you and you lock arms in this Greco-Roman sort of sort of fight and you push him away. Seeing that it didn't work, he's going to take his machete to the air and strike down on you twice. Okay. So what's your AC? AC is 18. All right. The first one does not hit with a 10. Second one an 18 on the number. So that'll do... 11 slashing damage as the machete does hit you clean. All right. Okay, I'll take it for now. That's the creature's turn. Next. So Steve is, do I see Steve charging me or? You do, you are paralyzed. So let me just double check with whole person. Do you get to save at the end of a Can of you a cast turn? a spell when you're held or? When you're restrained? Yeah. Paralyze, I should say. Are we still in the second round? No, new round, third round. Oh, new round. Okay. So a paralyzed okay. creature is incapacitated, cannot move or speak. You automatically fail strength or dexterity saving throws. Attack rolls have advantage against you. And an attack that hits you, if the creature is within five feet, counts as an automatic critical hit. So you so can you cast a spell on... as long as it doesn't have need for you to speak um, or move. Let me check. So okay. no verbal or somatic components. Right. All right. <laughs> Let's go to... Well, you think about that. Somebody else probably yeah, should go, though. Yeah, I have a spell on mine. I'm just going to look it up. Yeah. All right. Let's have somebody else go. And if that's the case, Steve, if it's something you could have done, I'll let you go before Steve attacks you. So who is up now? Azula or Dobby? Or Brock? If you guys don't mind me... Um... Yeah, I'll, I'll you. okay. You're up close. So gonna... since since you are now within range, you need to give me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, okay. 16. You do pass. You are not frightened by the creature. However, um, now that you can see the creature's face, you need to give me a second wisdom saving throw. Okay. Somebody cover his face back up. Right. Oh, that's a crit fail. Okay, so so you're going to lose a point of um, san uh, madness. You're going to gain a point of madness, I should say. Uh, and you are frightened of him for one hour? Yeah, no, one minute. One minute. Okay, does frightened mean I can't attack him? Nope, you can. You get disadvantage. Disadvantage on attacks. And remind me, you'll save against us at the end of your turns. Okay. Okay, so, so what I'm here. going to do, though, which may help a bit, is I'm going to use my giant's might. Ooh. Um, so I now become large. Um, oh. And I now have advantage on strength checks, strength saving throws, and I deal extra 1d6 damage mm -hmm. uh, on one of my attacks. Gotcha. By the way, so everybody, Steph is a rune knight, so all the description will carry the subclasses. So she's a rune knight, and Brock is uh, now large-sized. Yes, I should have used that sooner. Um, okay, so I'm going to attack. Uh, oh, you said disadvantage on my attacks? Okay, so give me a second here. That one is one. Just roll again, It's that's fine. Yeah. Okay. If this one stays, though, it'll be a hit. Oh, I hope it hits. 13 does not hit. You do not. Your second attack? No, second attack. Let me try this now. Let's do it. No, I can't attack anything right now. So, um, unfortunately, I think that's all I have. One more wisdom uh, save to see if you can block. Well, what? Get out of it. Uh, to get out of the wisdom 
uh, to get out of the fear mechanic? Yeah, I'm actually gonna try. Uh, I'm gonna try to. I can't really move away without, without attack, uh, of attack of opportunity. So I guess I'll just stay where I'm at. Unfortunately, wisdom save to see if you stop being frightened of it. Oh, I can. Okay. At the end of your turn, you'll get it. Oh, I'm, this is the end of my turn. So. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And a fifteen. Uh, will that's, pass. A, that's a, yeah. Okay. You had a moment, Brock, where you were like, "Huh, oh, what is this thing?" Yeah. You've calmed like yourself. Anything. You're ready to go. You're <laughs> large and in charge. All right. <laughs> Steve's gonna stab Steve. Unless Steve, did you have a uh, another? Every well, so I can't do any. If it's verbal or somatic, I can't do it. Correct. Yeah, I mean, there's. I, I was just flipping through it for the heck of it. Um, I'd say ninety-eight percent of the spell player's handbook are verbal and somatic. They've got so. some sort of thing you have to say. Yeah, Steve's gonna attack yeah. you with his dagger. Let's see okay. how he does. It's gonna be a twenty-two because he has advantage on you. Mm-hmm. And he's going to do a total of seven piercing, including the critical hit. So, seven piercing damage. He looks okay. at his dagger. He's like, come on. I'm supposed to do more damage. Do more. Do more. He actually does have a second attack, so he's going to do it again. Come on now. 13? No. Okay. So, even he's... Steve, <laughs> failing here. Uh, but that's, your, that's his turn. Uh, so, you... Uh, I think everybody can go out of order here. It doesn't really matter. The enemies have gone. Although the horror does have legendary action, so decide what you'd like to do. I forgot. Did you say I, like I didn't get a saving throw for the hold, or oh, hold? So at the it would be at the uh, at the end of each of your turns. So if you'd like to make one, you can. All right. Let me give it a go. Probably good that Steve goes now because the horror could attack him. Yeah. All right. I'm held. All right. Well, the horror is going to spend one of its legendary actions to attack Bork, uh, Brock. Gosh. You know, I can How change you... the name back. That was the original name. <laughs> That's what's confusing me. That's what's confusing you were, me. A, a you were 12. the one who told me to change it. <laughs> a twelve doesn't hit you, right? Does not hit me, luckily. That's it's one of its legendary actions. Okay, we go to Dobby or Azula. Do you want to go or do you want to do you okay? Yeah, so I'll, go. I'll go ahead and go. So 15, 20, 25. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of go over here. I'm going to cast Advance or Scorcher. There we go. That's what I'll do. It's a line? Yep, it's a line. So going straight down. Um, each creature, so I need a dexterity saving throw it seems yes i see okay deck save yep 15 and i guess it does wow it rolled nat 20 and i have advantage on rolled two nat 20s wow well it's gonna take not that it had advantage i'm just saying i rolled and it just happened to have the two dice rolls both 20s well it's gonna take 13 uh half 13 I rolled another one in there. Oh my gosh, you're rolling it terribly. So six damage? Terrible. Yeah. The creature seems to be guarding this crystal. It doesn't want to move away from it. It tries to do everything in its power to stay above the crystal, even with the blast in its face. Dobby? All right. Um, you hear Bear coming up behind you, by the way. So I look over my shoulder and see Bear? Yeah. Hey, Bear. Hey, Bear. And then I go back to my serious face to... Uh, Attacking this creature. Um, how far is he? 25 feet. Um, do I have to take a test before I go? You're not close enough to it. Not close enough, excellent. All right, so then I'm going to send Hockey up <clears throat> to give um, aid to the next fellow who attacks this creature. Okay. And I will blast it with um, a level three magic missile go for it so that's three four five d3 plus five nice there's a d4 magic missile four sorry d4, d4. yeah five d4 plus 
five because it's five of them. Uh, nineteen damage. Oh, that's gonna that's gonna hit it. The creature takes all the missiles, poo, 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 steps back a bit, again, stepping over the crystal to make sure it doesn't go too far from it. It's going to use legendary action to hit hockey out of the sky. What? Total of 14. Does that hit hockey? Yeah. All right, hockey disappears and goes into his other realm. No, I'm pissed. Okay. Now we go to... Be uh, bear, bear, you finally catch up. Hey. Okay, so, so when Dobby like turned around to say hi, bear, all he saw was kind of like periodically the top of my head would like come up to the surface of the water and then sink back down. I'm like yeah. jumping along, trying, to, and you can hear me going like, Dobby, <laughs> and so I'm like trying, and then I get out of the water. The first thing I see, I'm gonna say I got out at the moment when the aberration attacked hockey and made hockey disappear. So instantly I say, <gasps> and I fly into a rage. All right. So <laughs> let me just get this straight though. Can you rage on the end of your turn? Would you, you would lose it or is it, cause you have to attack something, right? Yeah. So, so oh, okay. I was hold planning the rage. on- yeah. Okay, I was planning on um, like moving on up to here and attacking it. Well, we were saying that since you oh. came this turn, you're basically entering this time. Unless you have a bonus action to use, I don't know. I don't know what things your character might have as a bonus action, but like how Azula was able to quicken something. But if, if otherwise, yeah. you just got here because otherwise, you were behind okay. everybody. Yeah. Okay. In that case, I'm still like climbing out of the water, like. <laughs> Yeah, like spitting up water and I see what happened and and like I start to feel the rage build in me and so I hastily grab for anything that I can throw I find a dagger I'm just gonna chuck a dagger at him nice okay, okay. you have a can you throw a dagger as a bonus action I forget no because it's an offhand weapon no it's a wait can you throw just a weapon as a bonus action using an offhand weapon. Can some, does somebody know the answer to this? Because normally to attack and attack action, right? Throw a weapon as an offhand attack. That's interesting. So it says here Huh, I don't I don't know how this would work. Because right, throwing an action is an action, right? Doing an attack is an action. Oh man, I am sorry to complicate this. You know what? So, I'll just crawl out of the water and I'll just kind of like stand there on the shore for a moment. And I'm just panting. I'm panting how no, oh, I, I can't. I think you it. can do it. <laughs> it says here, making an attack with an offhand weapon. Uh I think Google says yes as well. Yeah, making an attack with an offhand weapon consumes your bonus action, which you can take after making it. Oh, which you can take after making an attack with a light melee weapon. Okay. So, my thought is that no, you can't. You see yes, Dobby or uh, Andrew? Uh, I, I read the after making an attack as like. I didn't see that as a requirement. You have to make an attack thought. first. Yeah, you have to be yeah. able to make an attack to then do an offhand as an additional mm -hmm. weapon. Okay. That's what it is. Thank you. Now we know. In that case, all right, then I'm going to just drag myself out of the water yeah. and I'll stand on shore. I'll Perfect. just be like, <gasps> and I'm like spitting water. Water's coming out of all my orifices. I'm wringing out my mullet. That saves just... back. By the way, Bear's got some new artwork that Michelle made. I'm just going to zoom Bear out there. <laughs> Beautiful Bear. Oh, thank you, thank you. He's inspired by the character of Steven Universe, if there are any fans out there. Oh, it's kind of a mashup. Perfect. All right, so yeah. that would be the end of the round. We need death saves for everyone that's down. And then once we do that, we'll roll for initiative. Andrew, you roll me initiative next. Uh, I failed the death save for Lothar. Okay. So one more. And roll me an initiative. For Yen. Initiative is 11. I got a 12. 
So we're going Ooh. first here. Steve, our friend Steve, not our friend Steve, excuse me, our enemy Steve, is going to cast Spirit Guardians. Um, the Guardians are going to flit around within 15 feet of him, so if you go within 15 feet of him, be careful. They are evil-looking, fiendish creatures. And uh, Steve is going to just move right here. No, he's actually good, because you're within it as well. So he's Can going I, to... Uh, okay. Can I use yeah, I need a, a, I need a wisdom... Sorry, uh, let me just read the rest of it. So at the... <clears throat> inside this aura, your speed is halved. And when a creature enters it for the first time or starts its turn there, you're going to take a wisdom saving throw and suffer some damage, okay? So when it gets to your turn, Steph and Yogmir are going to have to make wisdom saves. Can I counterspell that? Oh, well, why didn't you say so, Dobby? I tried. You can counterspell it. Do you, uh, it's a third level spell, so it automatically goes away. Yeah, it counters third level as well. Okay, Steve is angry. And he's going to take his time to move backwards now. And, uh, no, he'll run and grab the crystal. He picks the crystal up from under the feet of the creature. It seems to be burning his hands as he then uh, runs over into the water. That's his turn. All right, we go to the group. Who wants to go now? Brock? Probably Brock. I mean, yeah, and I have to make, what, four wisdom saving throws at this point? Nope, because once you suffer it, you uh, are immune to it. Oh, good. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Am I still um, being held? You are still being held, yep. Still being held. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to hit hit the aberration who's right in front of me still. Um, let me check here. <laughs> A 20? Or am I still disadvantaged? You're still frightened of him, right? Because you didn't... Oh, no, you passed, uh, you passed the save. So uh, you're not. Yes, you're not, I did pass no, that No one. disadvantage. Nope. Okay, great. 20 hits. Um, Give me a second here. So I have... I think we just need to crush the crystal with, like, a sword. So that's <laughs> Break 18, it. 18 plus a d6 is... So that's 18 slashing damage there. I'm going to hit him a... S oh, wait. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna hit him a second time. That's a twenty-two. Yep. Um, That'll work. And again, you don't you don't seem to think all of it goes through, but you know. Right. I'm gonna do that. So that more. is strike an extra to uh, one of my one of my attacks with a weapon. So okay, so that's another eleven. Straight gotcha. Another eleven. Yep. Um, and then actually, I'm going to do a quick action search, if I could. Um, I'm going to try to throw a battle axe at, um, Steve. Okay. I'm going to try it out. Uh, hand axe, you mean? A hand axe, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah not a battle axe. That would have been ridiculous to throw that. <laughs> um, I don't think I make it. That's 11. Ooh, so. no, no. Shoot. Okay. But you get another attack as well, because you action surged. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to throw my last one, then. Okay. At him. At Steve. Yes, it's Steve. That'll hit. 24. Okay. Yep. That will do this much. That's six slashing. Six. So I messed Steve's HP up before. I'm going to put it back to the full, and he took a total of this now. Okay. So you hit Steve. Uh, the axe, and uh, he's looks like he's headed towards the ship that's, you know, popping out of the floor here. Um, we go to... Yeah, we go to the creature. I know you're big, but he's going to still take one more attack to try to grab you. Give me an athletics check. Okay, can I So, advantage on work. strength checks plus two on all of my ability checks. Yeah, so it's advantage and plus two to your normal... Yeah, this is yeah. not going to work. Yeah. He had to give it one try because the damage he does no, is so good. I'm still I'm still going to roll. You know my rolls oh. here. Oh, yeah. That's that's a, a, cr a crit. Yeah, um, you, you're able to withstand him. Yeah, it's 20. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. So the slasher is gonna. Mm. I'm not used to being useful here. I think I may have gotten this guy. Oh, I made a mistake. I think I made a mistake. I made a mistake. I am going to. Okay, well, I still made a mistake. I still made a mistake. But I, I rolled and I rolled low enough. 13 is not going to hit you, right? No. Okay. Let's go with an 18 for the machete. 18 is my armor class. So, Oh, wait. Uh, oh, I don't think I get anything else. Yep. And the second okay. one's going to be a 12. So that's probably not going to hit. But the machete, one machete is going to hit for nine slashing damage. Okay. And then it's the end of its turn. It's going to uh, move now that it doesn't have the crystal. Oh, wait. If that hits me, can I do one more thing? Yeah. Can I use my cloud rune and throw that at Steve instead? Yeah, absolutely. So nine to Steve instead of you. Yeah. Yep. And Steve gets smacked across the face. Wait, he looks, what was that? He's like, what? <laughs> uh, the creature's going to move on the other side of you, though. All right. Who's up next? Can I, can I make a saving throw against the um, the hold or? Sure. Let's see if you snap out of it. Sixteen. All right. You're able to snap out of it. The end of your turn, you come to reality of what what just happened. You were held, and actually, mm -hmm. Steve might have ended up needing to make a con save after that nine anyway. So actually, let me let me roll that. Steve might actually no no yeah no, we're, not, we're not broken up his concentration being correct around. I just made a save and it, it passed so he's got a bonus of plus two yeah ten so he gets he's able to uh, hold the otherwise you're right you would have been freed before so you could have acted yeah but Yagna you snap out of it you realize what's going on but to your surprise your friend to your pleasant surprise your friends are here can um, I cast a spell now or do I have to wait till next turn yeah it's at the end of your turn yeah. The okay. Aberrant Horror will take an attack on on you, Steph, with your... It's a legendary. No, oh, I should have waited. For what? I don't know. For the next attack. A 14? 14 does not hit. Okay. Oh, glad All I right. didn't wait then. All right. Now we go to... Bear is next. Or Dobby or anybody, but... Ooh. All right. So, you the honors bear? Oh yeah. So I I drag. Oh, I can't move my token. I can't move my bear token. Really? Uh, now I can. Okay, cool. There is one yeah. thing you have to do before though, because you can see this thing. Um, you have to give it a wisdom saving throw. There's not too great a deal. We got a sixteen. You pass. You're not scared of this thing. No, I'm not. And in fact, I'm I'm quite upset. And I look around and I see how all my friends are injured. I see a whole bunch of random people I don't know, just like on the ground. And I, I look back and I see that Dobby is also, you know, looking forlorn. And I remember hockey disappeared and all of this just fills me with so much angry emotion that I just, uh, and then I, I break it into a rage, but of course, because I am so small. Uh, to me, it sounds like Aah! when I roar, but to you all, it sounds like. Yeah. And I lift up my shield and I charge with my battle axe at the aberrant horror. Um, and I will recklessly attack him. Go for it. All right, so let's go. Let's, let's do one of these guys. Reckless means that they're it's get advantage. An, an advantage. Yep. Okay. I know it's been a minute, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I got me a net twenty. That advantage seems mm. nice. It does. It does. Ah, oh, anger. It's a tool. All right. So we have eight slashing damage with the so battle axe. Actually, that one that you rolled. This is going to be even better for you or the three result that you got is mm -hmm. actually, remember, the second die roll is maxed. So it's actually five plus, what's your normal bonuses here? It's five plus two, right? Oh, no, no. 
1d8 plus 4. Is... So it, sh it should be... Let's roll it again. Just roll a d8. Roll it separately, because I don't want to mess with the math here. Roll a d8, and then add 8 to it, in addition to all your other damage. 8, and then the regular bonus, like the modifier? Yeah, like your strength and your rage bonus, yeah. Oh, and the rage. I forgot about the rage mm -hmm. bonus, too. So it's 16 okay. damage, right? 16 damage. Good. I'm just like, hack into it. That one's for hockey, and this one is for that guy over there, and this one is for that lady who's in the water. She looks distressed. Away. Now, that's, of course, not all going through because it's not magical damage, but still, eight went through. Your second attack? I've got a second attack. It has been a minute. This is awesome. Okay, so we have 18. a 25 to hit. 25, nice. And yeah. you have advantage as well. Uh, Michelle, reckless. Oh, so do you, I need it? Well, you could get a crit again. <laughs> you could get another crit, okay. Well, uh, still hits, uh, okay. Okay, all right, nice. So and then I'll- Seven. Yeah, hold on, I'll, I'll do the same thing. Oh wait, no, it wasn't the crit. Okay, okay, so yeah, seven damage for all the right. second attack. Three of that goes through. Okay, this, this thing's This one's also for hockey. Okay. Okay. All right, now yeah. we go to who's left here? Dobby, Azula? Um, go ahead, Dobby. Okay. So I have to take a test now? So I offered some help. Yeah, you do, yeah. All right. Because you're within so 20 feet now. Wisdom. Wisdom test is a 15. Yep. I'm good? Yep. You're, oh, you rolled a 15. Gotcha. Yes. Yep. However, that's Lothar, but still, it's fine. Uh, I'm using... Dobby's sheet. Oh, okay, gotcha. I think it okay. just comes in as well there because that's my name. And All good, yeah. right now. Um, all, right. all right. So now I'm going to do a couple things. Since I've been in my new hobgoblin body, I've been practicing a little bit with some martial tactics. Oh, so I'm going to go ahead and use my bonus action to cast Shadow Blade. Whoa! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And after I cast Shadow Blade, I'm going to use my normal action to cast Booming Blade on the Shadow Blade and then move in to attack Mr. Steve here with okay. the Booming Blade. Interesting. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I just want to make sure we do this right. Booming Blade is the attack, so you would just cast it when you get there? Oh, so, Booming Blade... Yeah, make a melee attack. I yeah, guess when so I you, get there. Yeah, 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 you do when you get there. The Aberrant is horror, though, though, is going to attack you as you pass by it, though, unless you go a different route. Uh, I have 30 feet. Can I get by without going past them? Yes, you can. You can go underneath. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'll go ahead and move there next to Stevie. And um, I'm going to roll. To go for it. Uh, let's see. Ooh, is that a crit? Yes, it I is. It. Wow. All right. So can you Where's remind me how crit works? Is it? It's a 2d8 psychic damage plus booming blade damage. Yeah, so here's so here's what happens, right? So all the dice are going to get doubled. The wep the weapon's original damage attack gets maxed so, for the second roll. So how much damage does it normally do? So just the shadow blade is 2d8 psychic. Wow. Okay, this is actually going to be huge. So 2d8 plus 16 plus the booming ba blade. 2d8 plus 16. And the booming blade is just normal, or is that critted also? Actually, I believe, yeah, I believe the booming blade would be doubled as well. Not, not, not a, not automatic. You have to roll double the dice like normal. Our crit rolls only for the original weapons attack. Okay, so then instead of 1d8, it would be 2d8. Right. Exactly. Wow. And if he moves, he'll take more damage. So 39 damage. And it, did you add your strength to that and stuff like that? Oh, no. Plus, plus or, three free because it's a finesse. So dex, dex weapon. So 42. Wow. Steve is actually alive, but he's. it looks like he's hanging on by a thread. You slashed him so good right across the midsection. Uh, he <laughs> basically drops the crystal and he holds his, his stomach and he's, uh, so, I surrender. <laughs> he surrenders? Oh, man. That's what he says. I don't know. All right. 
And now we go to Azula. So is the the crystals dropped? Yeah, it's like on the in the water here. So if I if I were to go here, would I not would I be able to pick it up? No. Um It's in the water by Steve. By Steve. Okay, never mind. Um I think I'm just going to cast a lightning bolt on the big guy. On the I big think guy? it's just a, str a straight line. Yeah, it works, yeah. Um All right, so let's do that. Um where to go? Goes a. Sorry, just I had the page open. Here we go. Hmm. A lot of ones. But, yep. So it's a DC 15. Oops. Fails. So it's gonna take all of that. Yep. 24. Yep. This creature cries out in some sort of a language that you'd understand. Its scream is more guttural and, and uh, similar to something like deep speech and uh, it looks to you it's uh, not happy it's going to take its attack of opportunity on Bear this time Bear this time it's going to reach out with its tentacly arms and give you a crushing hug 14 does it hit you? Four, my is 18 so then it does not hit you that's its legendary action back. Uh -oh. I've had it on the back. You wanted a hug, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. All right. That's the end of the round, I believe, correct? Yes. Okay. One more roll here, I think, is probably going to do it. Steve, you're back in the action here. And give me death saves for everybody else, okay? Steve, give me a initiative roll. 15. I got a 9, so group, talk nice. what you want to do. Uh, 12 for both ours, too. So he's got two successes and one fail? Yep. How's Yen and oh. Zuzu? Oh, man, I haven't been rolling for Zuzu at all. Oh, give me two more for Zuzu, then. Yeah. Uh, Well, I had a fail and a success, and then I got a nine, which I think is another fail. So two fails, one success, the opposite of of a Lothar. A Zuzu has got a success. And a and fail, but I feel like I have to roll another one. I feel like I went down pretty early. Okay, go ahead. Give me another one. Uh, so two fails. So You're two fails. on the brink of death as well. Yagnir is now back in the fray. Group, discuss your plan, and this is a big round. Go ahead. Uh, discuss well, with your... I have spells group. left, so... Yeah, I'm sorry. You don't have any spells left, Steve? No, I do. Oh, you do? Okay. Um... I mean, I don't mind. I don't mind slashing him. I don't know if anyone else ha or the ab or horror, but if anyone else has any ideas, just keep hitting away. Yeah, we should probably just finish off Steve, unless we oh. want to keep him alive. I have, yeah. I, I have Steve on his knees right now with my yeah. You guys right there. Take care of him. Why don't yeah? Why don't you hard. go um, and get Steve and try to grab the crystal because he would have dropped it. See if we can smash that or something. I don't know. Well, I, I was interested to hear Steve say that he surrenders in the last round. So I'm thinking, what if, like, you know, you hold him there and you ask him, like, if he knows how to defeat this aberrant horror? Like, yeah. if he knows anything. Yeah. Put him back into stasis. Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy's murdered a bunch of people, though. I don't know if he's going to give us anything useful. All right, well, who's oh, up we first? His life is on the line. Um, <laughs> I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt on the creature. Okay. It's a dexterity save, or no? That's a hit. You have to hit him. Yeah. Go um, ahead. Roll your I hit. Do? I believe so. Guiding bolt. Yeah. Um, let me look that up real quick. I don't know if I can hit him or not. Yeah. Spell attack. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Never mind. Yep. Forty-six uh, radiant if you hit him, and then right. the next attack gets it. Well, I'm gonna do it at the um, upper spell slots. It'll be five d six if I hit him. Go for it. 10 plus a uh, spell, uh, spell yeah. casting. Uh, spell so it would be your uh, wisdom and your proficiency. Uh, so that's 14. 14 does not hit. Shit. Ah! The aberrant horror. Too tough. All right. Next up is the aberrant horror. It's going to grab. Let's see here. 
It's going to give a crushing hug to Steph. Oh, no, wait. Uh, it'll be a 15. My proficiency is 3. Yeah, so that... 3. Yeah, yeah, but still. Oh, so, ah! oh, oh. so, so close. <laughs> ah. So I, I made a mistake earlier. I'm rectifying it. I did rectify it earlier. It can do this crushing hug attack, but I assumed that it said that it needed to be grappled, but it, actually I just read it wrong. When it hits you, it grapples you automatically. So I was doing post checks. I made a mistake. I'm going to attack you now with it. Steph, you take uh Well, you're not going to take anything. It doesn't hit you again, still. Let's see. He can't hit. He's very upset. He'll, He'll, try, it. He'll try it again. Yeah, oh, I, I oppose it, right? It's strange no, check? No, that's what I was saying. I made a mistake oh, earlier. Okay. I thought it was a grapple attack, but it actually just says simply, you are grappled when it hits you. Gotcha. So, okay, my bad. Um, I am going to use it again, though. He's going to hit you with a 19 on his second attack. So the second one does hit. Yeah. Yes. So he hits you. Okay. And this is, this is the good attack. This is the good one. The one he's been killing other people with. You take 25 plus 5, so 30 damage. Okay. 30 damage. And then he's going to hit you one more time with the machete for an 11. Nope, that's not going to work. Okay, so that's his turn on your turn. So no machete, or there was plus 11? It missed, an 11 oh, okay. to hit. Missed. Sorry. All right, so you're up. Group. Bear, you're pretty close. Uh, yeah, all right. I continue to scream, ah! and I just like keep hacking away, hacking away at the knees and shins of this aberrant horror. Um, Take once, it out. Once again, I'm going to recklessly attack. Yep. Um, and and yeah, okay. So let's, let's do that. Ooh. Okay, so a 19 to hit. That'll hit. Roll your second, uh, yep, damage, yep. Okay, and I figured out how to add rage on roll 20. Ever a learning process. Um, so, <laughs> so it looks like 10 damage. Got it. And your second? Uh, 23, oh. that'll hit. Yeah. Oh, bless the reckless attack. <laughs> okay, 11 damage, so we have 21 damage total. Gotcha, so perfect. Ooh. Okay, next up we've got Steph or the casters. Actually, Steve's gonna go. Steve says to Dobby, please, please don't hurt me. Dobby, would you say anything? Give me one good reason. Oh, I, 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 I didn't mean to get it mixed up in all this. I swear to you. I wonder if he, uh, I can't say anything. So. Tell him to shut his monster off. You got it. You got it. And then he's going to cast another. He's going to cast Flame Strike on you, his last Flame Strike. On me? Yep. <laughs> well, you, it's going to hit. It's going to hit you, and it's a 10 foot radius. So it's actually going to hit you and. Oh, it could hit the horror. So it's going to you, you and Yagnir. I knew I should have killed this guy. <laughs> Oh, it's gonna, it's gonna hit his guy, guy too, right? Open. It's gonna hit his guy, actually. So he can't do that. So he's gonna do it. I'm gonna draw the shape so we can all see it. So it's a 10 foot radius. So it's 20 foot cube, like this, roughly like this. Uh, and he's gonna cast it. Hmm. I can't get you, can I? I've got you. You know what? Now. You know what? Maybe he sacrifices himself. He's sacrificing himself. <laughs> what? <laughs> yep. If he's so he's gonna dark. go up in flames. If he he's lived his whole life to save this thing. All right. Give me deck saves in, in, if you're in this. You don't want to counter Does monster guy get hit too. No, monster guy is not gonna hit this. It's you see this uh box I drew. Yeah, it's right over him. Yeah, we can see it. No, he's excluded from it. Oh. It's over. It's over Steph. It's not over the monster. <laughs> Yeah, that's me. That's not the monster. Although Steph is looking like a big I see the monster. Oh. oh the, you thought that was the horror? I thought that was the horror the whole oh. time. Oh. 
So the That's lightning me. bolt hit you. Uh, <laughs> Deck saves in this in this area here. Do I have to do anything as Yen, or is it just like her unconscious body is getting pummeled? Oh, Yen. Yeah, you're you're, you're dead. dead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know but just, um, the fire rip. consumes you, just like just like the your uh, concept of Yen. So this actually makes perfect sense here. Wow. Wow, amazing. Steph, how much health do you have left? Me? Um, I'm doing okay. Oh, I, I rolled a 10. I don't know if I'm taking any damage from You're this, You're taking this, damage, though. yes. Okay. Um, I'm I'm hurting pretty bad, so. Dex save from Yagnir and Dex save from Dobby. I might want to use my last third level spell. To do what? To counter it again. Oh, well, that you got to decide now. Yeah, that would just be humiliating for me. I can't have this guy who's at my mercy with my sword on his neck casting a spell and hurting all my allies. That would just make me look bad. So I gotta hey, shut that down. Go for it. I like yeah. this new Dobby. I like this I mean, new Dobby. That's, that's, that's my new personality. I can't I can't look bad in front of people. That's my biggest pet peeve right now. At all so, costs, I can't look bad. Dobby, this is a fifth level spell. So you need fifth to get level. Yep, so okay. you need to roll a, a spell um uh, check against it. Um, so it's it has to be plus the number of levels above third level, right? Uh, it's if it's if it's above third level, then you need to roll a check a, d, a spell casting ability check. It's ten plus a spell's level, so this time it's fifteen. Plus my spell casting ability, right? Yeah, it's a check too. So proficiency and your right. spell. Casting so be plus seven. Yep, and it's a fifteen. Oh, oh no! A one. Uh, Divination Dobby would have had no problem here. Well, I, how many allies do I have that I could see? Because if I fail a check, is this a check? Yeah. I could add up to five. I'd have to be a thirteen. You said. You need to be fifteen. Oh no, no, won't work. Yeah. okay, yeah, no. So I'm right. even worse now. So. <laughs> 22 damage to people in there. So Yagnir and Dobby, you have to take saves. If you fail, you're taking 22 damage. Sorry, 24. 24. What type? What type of damage? Or fire, what type of save? 12 fire, 12 radiant. It's deck save. Deck save. Is it deck save? And what was uh, 10 did not save? No. Okay. And what was the DC? Uh, that you don't know. Uh. And that was hmm. a 22, right? It was a 24, actually. 12 and 12. 24, Jesus. Yeah. So what'd you get, Dobby and Yagnir? I got a 12. Uh, do I add my proficiency to that, or just the dex? It's your life dex life. saving throw. So whatever your saving throw would be, yeah. So probably just dex nine. for you. Yeah, yeah. I got a 9. Uh, go ahead. What'd you get? 9. A 9. Both of you fail. So okay. everyone including Steve himself, is taking 22, 24 radiant and fire damage. Does that also get the crystal then, too, in that? It does, and the crystal, after the fire storm, seems unaffected. Hmm. But... Save. Oh. oh, sorry, no, well, it's I was just saying, but that's fire. the end of his turn. I tried to destroy it with fire, it's not... It's a radiant yeah, but it's, this is uh, as well. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Didn't work. The radiant, yeah, but radiant is fire damage. Oh, sort of, but different. It's kind of, but maybe electrical it's a different damage will take category. It out. All right, so that's the end of his turn. Steve lies in a charred husk of himself, and uh, we go to the group. It's gonna say at this point, Yen just kind of dissolves into like a pile of ash. Yeah, and it just floats away in the water. Yen's story has come full circle. Yep. It's like poetry. Um, I'm I am hurting <laughs> pretty bad. Yeah. I think I'm still grappled, though, right? You are grappled, yeah. Oh, gosh, I can't do shit. Um, I could try to run up and try to smash the the uh, crystal. Yeah, so if anyone, I, I mean, I'd rather I'd rather uh, me go at the end since I can't do anything besides try to get out of the grapple. I mean, I can um, move up and attack this guy since this guy. Um, is dead. Or Dobby can you go crash? You crush the crystal. He's away. But I don't know what would kill the crystal. Everything we tried is not working. 
We've only tried fire, I think, was the only thing. No one actually hit it. And radiant? Yeah, with fire any... doesn't no. do anything to it. it. Yeah, we never tried, like, an actual, like, striking it with yeah, something. Yeah. All I have is a wooden staff and a flame sword. Did we uh, roll for initiative yet? Or... Uh, yeah, roll. we're in initiative, so, yeah. It's somebody's turn. Who's last to go? It'd be... Yog, well. I, guess, I guess I could just do another lightning bolt to the... To the guy. Um. Yeah, I'll do that. Bob. Go for it. Um. Let's see. Yeah, let's just do that. So it's a, another Ooh. saving throw. Much better roll. How much damage? Uh, thirty-six if he fails. Oh boy. Dex, right? Yep. 15. 18. Oh, so he takes half. So, 18? Yes. Okay. The creature's going to use its last attack to, uh, mm, let's see, machete. Mm, yeah, machete you, Steph. All right. It's legendary action. 19. 19 will hit. Yeah, Nine I'm Nine slashing. Make... Yeah, I think I'm down. So you shrink back to size, and the creature drops you onto the floor of the cave here. Group, who's next? I mean, hit points, yes, Steph. Actually, I bounce back up. Oh, you're a half one. orc. Yeah. So I bounce back up with one, and if I can go, I'd like to, because uh, I'd be ungrappled now, because he thinks I'm dead. Well, no, you actually, you actually, when you go to zero, you actually just don't go to zero. It's not like you fake being dead and then you come back. You just don't die. So I'm still grab. Oh wait, I didn't get to roll to see if I'm out of this grapple though. Well, grapple is up to you. You can still attack while you're grappled. You're not restrained, so you just have a zero movement. So you can attack. Oh, so I could. Yeah. Before she oh. does that, can I cast cure wounds on her? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. If you're gonna sure. cast cure cure wounds, you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. I want to. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, so you can get behind her and cast Cure Wounds, and then, Steph, you can make yeah. your attack. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll um, do that. I'll move and I'll cast Cure Wounds on her. Awesome. Roll your 1d8, or whatever level you're casting it at, and then, Steph, you can roll your attack. Okay, cool. Can I do it at second level? Sure. Then it'd be 2d8. 2D8. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. And, Steph, you're, again, no Good. disadvantage. I'm at 10. Alright, so I'm at 11. Hold on, guys. Give me a second here. I'm at disadvantage still since I'm grappled? No, no disadvantage. Grapple doesn't no disadvantage. impose disadvantage. Just means you can't Got move. Got it, yeah. Okay. So, but, um, but I'm regular ooh. size again. Yes, however, so since you're now still grappled at the start of your turn, he does more damage to you. So it says until the grapple ends, the target takes the amount of damage at the start of each of... Oh, the slasher's turns. Never mind. Go ahead. Wait. I did the damage right to you. So I'm not able to get out of this grapple at all? You can... No, no, no. I apologize. I may be confusing you. I... You can always get out of it. You can make an attempt to get out with an athletics check if you'd like. But the damage that I did to you when I grabbed you, I did it already on his turn. It's at the start of every turn. As long as he keeps holding you, he does more damage. So don't worry. Ignore what I just said. You can either attack him or try to get out, it's up to you. Oh, I could have tried to get out when I was large, though. And I had advantage. <laughs> You're still large, because you actually oh. don't, don't die. Okay, so I'm going to try and get out. That's an athletics check? It's an athletics check, yes. It's 15. You get out. Yep, you, you escape the grapple. And that's my whole turn, then, almost. It's your action, unless you have a bonus attack, or bonus action, or something, okay. or yeah. movement. Um, I'm going to, uh, uh, yeah, bonus action. I'm going to do also my second wind. Okay. So, um, Bear or Dobby? Um, so since this thing talks psychically, my sword yep. does psychic damage. I'm going to try and do like an Excalibur uh, jab into it. Interesting with my um, flame sword. Go for it. And I'll also do 
Proving Blade on it also to throw some thunder damage in there. Just just sure. to try out different damages. Go for it. Um, so my Shadow Blade. Um, does any 10 or a 15 hit it, or do I automatically hit it? I'm going to say you just do the damage, yeah. Okay. So the damage would be 16 Psychic, and... Nine thunder. Okay, you destroy it. Oh. Yeah, we'll say you Which destroy this. So, so the psychic, really? <laughs> the psychic damage splits through this crystal, and uh, you can tell that whatever energy had pulsing through it, that powered this ship is no longer going to uh, to work here. So you split it down the middle, and it, it ceases to glow or pulse. All right. I like Bear. this sword. Yes. Uh, do I notice? Do we notice any changes in the aberrant horror? No, but he he's very concerned about the crystal. Just more of a, just more of his role playing aspect. Of he's not like powered down or shrinks or anything like that. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's what I was going for. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you, Davi. I was hoping for the same. Um, okay, well, in that case, I will continue screaming um, and continue to attack. Go for uh, it. Yes, yeah. And if possible, I mean, I don't know if I'm like too short, but I want to try to aim my attacks towards his tentacles yeah. or whatever he's using to like hug and crush yeah, people. Yeah. Hop up, yeah. Just like, huh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, cool, cool. So we're recklessly attacking. Nice. Ooh. All right. Okay, there. So... How do you kill this creature? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, so, so as I come down with the final blow, I say, In Hockey's name! And and like I, I pile drive whatever I can reach on this guy, maybe like a shin or something, and <clears throat> I split his leg open and he's just like gushing whatever his blood or ichor or whatever all over me. And then I, I grin and all you see is like my big happy grin in the middle of all these like gross fluids that have drenched <laughs> my gnome body. And I look over and I say, we did it Dobby. Air high five. All right, everybody. So you gather everything here that you'd like. If you want to take the treasure, the ship is seems immovable now, especially with the power source being uh, removed from it. It looks like it could go perhaps under the water here, and that's maybe how it came into this cavern in the first place, underneath the ground, under the water of the lake. Um, unless you were to figure out how to power it, you wouldn't be able to move it, but it is something to note. Maybe you could take sketches or diagrams of it. The book that Yen had might be burned up, though. Uh, so whatever you can take from that as well, you'll bring back to headquarters here. Zuzu and Lothar, you need to give me a saving throws, because otherwise, if you don't save now, you'll be dead, right? Oh, wait, can I help? Yeah, but they still, it would be at the end of the round. They need to take at least one more before oh, anybody could act. Gotcha. So, Lothar, you are at two and two now, so you're still alive, right? Yep. And Azula, sorry, Zuzu, you're at two and two as well. Two and two, yep. So, the two of you could be healed. Um, Steph, did you want to use your healer's kit? Um, actually, I mean, we can just stabilize them first, right? You could stabilize them, yeah. Yeah, well... Yeah, don't... Don't waste yeah. healing on. <laughs> I assume Yagnir, you'll heal one, stabilize yeah, Steph, you can yeah. use your healers can stabilize the other. Yeah, we'll just uh I'm just gonna stabilize them, not bring them up. Because that okay. would use a whole healer's kit. Okay. So just one use of the other one. Okay. So then there you go. So you're both stable, but unconscious. They'll bring your bodies back to camp. I'm gonna switch over our roll twenty to our full screen here. But Lothar lives to fight another day. Lothar's alive, and so is Zuzu. <laughs> um, I'm is gonna switch Zuzu? off our. We have our alt names up. I'm gonna put our true names up. 
But yeah, so okay, so uh group, yeah. What do you what do you do now? So you head back to camp. What do you want to do in here? Is there anything that you want to collect? Uh 20,000 oh, gold before. pieces, I think you said. Yeah, there was 20,000 gold pieces. I'm stuffing as many of those in my pockets as I can. <laughs> That'd probably that, take some too. Yeah. yeah. Well, take some. The crystal at this point, like it's just shattered. Is it still glowing? The pieces or? Yeah, it's a uh, no, not glowing. Still, it's shattered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's split from the sword, so you could collect them though. Take them with you back to headquarters. You know. And what happened to the book? The book was burned alive in, uh, a burned with Yen as she burned alive. Oh, all right. There I might had be something. Pages in my hand, though. I, mean, I had some totally... pages. Oh, that's right. Brock totally had some pages. Thing? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. You should bring so, those back. So you collect as much of the gold as you can that you can carry. I'll, we'll talk about how much you could possibly get, and then perhaps maybe going back to take more. But you head back out with the bodies of Zuzu and Lothar, and when you get back, you finally see. Ned there. Um, he's got all the other counselors in the cabin. They see you approach, and uh, old man Coates, he says, then it's been done. It's settled. Creature's dead. Steve is dead. I always knew that that man was not to be trusted. He said something that he studied his whole life to find, and you know, resurrect this creature, and uh, he died for it, though. Then all is right. I just, uh, I weep for all those that this creature has tortured. Uh, it won't torture anybody ever again. Ned says, um, where did, uh, Yen go? Oh, she didn't make it, buddy. I put like a uh, a hand on his shoulder, and be like, "It'll be okay, man. I know, I know." I'll say, uh, Yen died very bravely. She wasn't my one that chance. Into... My one chance. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say you must honor your friend now for the rest of your life for the sacrifice that she made. Hmm. All right, so. You tell them as much as you'd like of the adventure, but you're going to keep some of the things probably more a secret or less. You'll re consult with your guild when you get back. You leave Lothar and Zuzu in, in good hands with the counselors uh, to heal back to, to strength. And at the end of this, you leave the camp with all your loot and new discoveries in tow and headed back towards Towards civilization. As we end, there's a couple of questions that you all should be thinking about. You've seen meteorites fall to the sky before. In fact, you even went to Icewind Dale once to figure that out. And uh, now, this is the second one that you've heard of a creature from another part of the cosmos entering into this into this existence. Will there be more in the future? Uh, you leave the camp, the fog around you vanishes as you head and find the road the next morning. Now those who are going to be at camp are free to live without the fear of the slasher once more. And that, everybody, is the Camp Clearwater Massacre by Oof. DM Dave. It was a massacre. Well done. That was awesome. Yeah, that was I, a lot. Ooh. Thank you, thank you. As I will say, in, I, I did say in the introduction video that I have yet to make, this was obviously adapted just because we're trying to do it as a one-shot and one-play, uh, excuse me, one-shot, play, and one time. And I've also adapted it to kind of fit our story that we are weaving throughout the entirety of this second season. All right, so last season, as I mentioned, we kind of just were doing one-shots and to kind of weave them together at the end. I kind of have an idea where this is going. I think maybe this is a little bit of a tease as to what might be to come. Um, I'm excited, and I really want to thank all of you for coming back for second season. Uh, I love, I'm love. i glad we got to see some of our characters, actually all of our characters, 
back in action by the end. So oh, that was fun. fun. Yeah, it was good. Uh, glad yeah. to be back. Glad and be what back. a what a thrilling first return to Supernatural Twenty. Oh my gosh! Like way to hit the ground running, you know? Yeah. Uh, everyone, we're gonna sign off now. Stay safe. Look out for mind flayers, and we'll see you on the <laughs> tabletop. Have a great evening. Okay. Um, hey, hold on one second. Oh, wow, look at this. Dean brought a a Spider-Man bagel. Look at this. Oh, wow. What? Oh, that is cool. cool. Is this for me? Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not for you, Dad. Huh? Yeah, I want a bagel, yeah. Yeah, bring a bagel. This is good, too, because we're just recording, so I'll probably cut this all out. <laughs>